come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a uh, movie talk show podcast where we watch movies that are chosen round robin by one of the Freak Show regulars every week. Then we talk about it for your listening pleasure and enjoyment. Maybe. Who are these internet radio superstars? (laughs) Hopefully. Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And we want to remind you that... uh, Every review that you give us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, wherever you found us, uh, helps us, uh, you know, it's one of those, al- the algorithms and mm, how they work. Yeah. And it raises us up the more we have and we get heard by more people like you. So uh, why don't you go on over there, wherever you found us, take a moment and give us a star, a like, a thumbs up, whatever the service has. We'd appreciate it. And thank you. You can also write into us. On Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Follow along for the time of your life. And tonight's movie was chosen by... Michaela. Michaela, what did we watch yesterday? We went on a freak show field trip. By the Yay. time you're hearing this movie, it's been out for a week now. Mm. Uh, to see Pet Cemetery 2019. Mm-hmm. Directed by... Kevin Kolsch and Dennis Widmeyer. Who also did Starry Eyes, which I, is a really good movie. Actually, I really like that movie. You saw it? Yeah. Anybody else? I no, have not. Guys. I own it, actually. Do you? Yes. Um, Scream, the TV series. They did that. Yeah, uh, Holidays. Um, one of the episodes. One of the episodes of Holidays. And they're going to be doing the upcoming Mama 2. I know. I saw that poster. Oh, um, really? Yikes. I was like, yeah. did we need a Mama 2? No. Nope. Yeah. What's your whole title, too? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Holly knows her mind yeah. on that one. Yeah. It was an okay movie, but like, do we need to know more about I Mama? Say, I don't know. No, I don't think okay. so. I think it's safe to say that 90% of the time, we don't need another one. Yeah. yeah. But Just we, don't. the hope, the fire of hope burns eternal that maybe uh, they found a good reason for making a movie. So we'll show up. I'm like willing to bet Jack- Jessica Chastain is not going to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody from the first movie yeah. shows up. Mama's going to be like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's more on me. the poster yeah. for Mama 2. Well, oh. it, what, what, like, it's Mama, like, numeral 2. Why is it not comma T-O-O? Like, why not mess with the, I don't know, it seems yeah. like it make more sense. <laughs> so these guys are basically neophytes in the Hollywood system coming from an independent mm-hmm. background. Um, okay, so I guess before we begin talking. It's going to be uh, spoiler. Yeah. Mm. This mm-hmm. is, oh, we can't not, there's no way to talk about this movie without talking about spoilers. Sure. Mm-hmm. I think so. So if yeah. you haven't seen Pet Cemetery, we gave you a week. This one or the first one. Yeah. 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 Uh, we and also, the book. Or the book. And the book. <laughs> so 35 years worth of spoiler content is about yeah. to happen. We're going to talk about the all, all of it. Uh, and we also, we already talked about it uh, not too long ago on our episode Pet Cemetery right. 1989, which you can go back and find mm-hmm. uh, and take it. It was a good episode. A it was a good episode. Okay. So, um, yeah. What? Um, I mean, I don't know. Like, yeah, what? Okay. Why? Uh, why? Who? So you have to <laughs> come up they? with a reason to make a remake of uh, uh, of anything, right? I mean, that's what the whole... Can I give a little bit? I listened to an interview with both the directors today and was like, come on, bring, give me your justifications here. Sure. So, and they provided a lot of backstory, actually. This movie's been in development hell for a very long time. Um, the script that we saw was written over 10 years ago. Really? Yes. It has been updated and changed a little bit here and there, but Matt Greenberg of H2O yeah, he wrote was the script 10 credit. years ago. Okay. Yep. Okay. And then uh, Jeff Bueller, Midnight Me Train, and that recent movie, The Prodigy, yeah. he did the most recent write on okay. it. But those are the only two people credited writing. Um, it's been in development hell for a long time. Alexander Aja was att- attached to direct at one point in time, and he actually walked when they did the big change with Ellie and Gage. He, when he stepped on the project, they said, here's the script, and that's what it was, and he said, that's not the story. Oh, really? I'm not doing it, yeah. and then he walked. Uh-huh. Good for him, I guess. Uh, like I, I, mean, I respect I him for- I think he'll end up better off. I mean, he's I making think a he's crocodile doing fine. Movie next. Yeah. Oh, Kill I'll go see movie. it. Wait, is I it mean, the called like, crawler? Crawler. Yeah, like that. Right. I just heard about that. They were just <laughs> talking about that. That sounds great. I know. Yeah. I'm all down for the killer crocodile right? movie. Bring it back. And uh, so, so this basically anyone who stepped into this project, the script has already been written, and Paramount's been like, it's not changing. This is how it is. 
Um, Dennis Widmeyer and Kevin Kolsch said when they got the script that it was even farther from the book than what we saw, which is really hard for me to believe because I don't know how much farther you get away than what we saw. Um, But they said that when they got the script, there was no Zelda in it at all. And um, there was hardly any Judd in it at all. And they said that they made arguments to add back in what we saw. But they were not. They were also not given any writing credits or any passes at the script. They just basically said they made their case for those things, and then someone else wrote it in. Mm. So this is a very like studio controlled project because mm-hmm. they're holding on to the the. I mean, because I always it's want, an it cash grab, right? Yeah, that's yes. why yes. after ten years, somebody's like, you know, we have this pet cemetery. Mm-hmm. It's a big deal if we mm-hmm. can cash in on like one of the biggest, you know, right. uh, mm-hmm. Stephen King properties. Yeah. yeah, and it is one of the ones that's like. That's right for a remake. It's been for 30 another, years. One. That's, um, yeah. They could make another one and try it again. Mm-hmm. I'm all for it. When they said they were going to do it, I was like, cool. Mm-hmm. We could do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Hey, man. Do you remember I when we talked about stuff. this movie the last time? I, we, were we all against the idea of a remake? This is before it came out. The first time we saw a trailer, most of us were excited. By the second trailer, a lot of us had lost our excitement. <laughs> that yes. was how it went. Yes. <laughs> we got to talk when about this whole process. When we heard John Lithgow was cast, yeah, yeah. we were all like, yay! And then... Yeah. It's all been downhill since then. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, you know, it's like I always try to imagine, you know, what it would be like to work in Hollywood and be called into a meeting. You know, it's like, I want to do something next. I'm a new, you know, director. I've got this. And they come at you and they're like, well, how about, you know, some classic movie? And you're like, well, if uh, if I don't do it, somebody else is going to, you know, and this could be the one that does it for me. And, you Mm. know. And so well, what you, if I never get offered a project this big again? Yeah. What if this is my only chance? You know, they were saying Starry Eyes was made for under three hundred thousand dollars, and this movie had like a twenty-five million dollar budget. How do you say? How do you say no to that when, like, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. didn't have that budget go to green screens? I feel like it went to green oh, screens. Dang. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I mean, the woods don't exist anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Sean, they had to build that staircase. Got to be a reason. Sean, they had to build that ancient staircase up to the go? burial ground. They go up. All right. So is that what we want to do? We want to talk about the, the differences. Should we do what, pros what, and cons? What, what, well, what, what we're going to do there, there. Listener, well, we Honestly, are we should just go through the Sorry. plot because it's so different than the other versions of this. Like the plot's all out of order, and it should does just, completely different things. It makes completely wild choices that make no sense. Should we just start at the beginning? That stupid cold with... open that has no point. Well, see, this is the way I took the cold <laughs> open. All right, mm-hmm. the cold open is a drone shot of uh, you're flying over the is that the fucking woods. trees. The Not shot, again. the shot. Sean said, "I never want to see again." <laughs> I, I, I literally about you. rolled my eyes. I as thought soon about as it came you. Out, I'm like, oh Jesus, not again. I was like, Sean literally just said weeks ago, "I never need to see yeah, the shot again." Yeah, in the the movie. Shot, I'll be fine. And what does this movie open with? Uh, then? I was like, he's immediately out. He's already yeah, like, I'm I out. Was, I'm like, oh Jesus, fine. I instantly mm-hmm. thought of you. I was like, I, w- I wish Sean was here right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, then it, it goes over. You eventually see this burning house. And then, you know, that's Judd's house. It's on fire. Right. And then you go to uh, the Creed house. And there's little dirt footprints leading up to the door. And there's blood coming out of the thing. And then we fade out. And I'm like, there. this is so starting stupid. with the climax, the morning after the right. original movie. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, for, for people who are going into it uh, cold... I don't see the point of like saying, look, this is going to end badly. We, we yeah. bought a ticket to a horror movie. <clears throat> yeah. We this know. Is, this is for people who have seen the other movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of this movie I felt was for people. Like it relies heavily on you having already experienced the first movie and they make choices that you wouldn't make if you were just making a movie for the first time. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Exactly. And I think that's its biggest weakness. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't the, as a person who definitely saw the uh, first movie. Mm hmm. Why did they need to put that in there at the beginning? The, Again, I, also, it had to be I know where time, it's right? going to go. Mm-hmm. I know what's going to happen. You don't mm-hmm. need to show me that shit's going to go wrong. I bought a ticket to a horror movie. I, I bought, know it's going to go yeah, bad. I bought a ticket yeah. to Pet Cemetery. Yeah. yeah. I don't I, know. I don't. I like was, I said, I think yeah. it's a tip. Uh, it's a tip to the, the fans of the first one. Or, you know, or to, you know, you're coming in at the, at the moment, the last one, the morning after the last one ended. And then we're mm-hmm. going to reverse it. And then we're going to show you the new alternate universe it, version it felt like that. a studio note to me it felt like a studio note being like we need a cold open we can, just can't open yeah. on them driving up the highway yeah mm-hmm. like that's like oh this like. opens too happy what can we put in front of this right yeah yeah, yeah. i agree well the story is well, uh, a- basically mm. the same as the <laughs> prior the, the both the book and the prior version uh it's about a family called the creeds there's uh lewis his wife uh Rachel, Rachel. daughter uh, Ellie, and son toddler Gage, and 
uh, you know, the uh, cat church. Mm -hmm. They move out to the country. They buy a big house and there's woods behind the house. And in the woods, there's a fucking pet cemetery, like a regular pet cemetery where everybody buries their kids. Mm -hmm. And you got the creepy neighbor across the street or their kids. Sorry, their pets. Pets, Sometimes they're kids. I was like, I was going to correct you. I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) where it goes. And uh, yeah, you got the creepy old or whatever, kindly old curmudgeon who lives across the street who knows everything about what's wrong. going on here. Yeah. Except in this movie, he's not. He doesn't say that in this movie. No. Because yeah. there's no relationship between him or anyone else in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. So this was an issue. Okay. So, I mean, like fairly early on in the movie, like, you know, you're sitting there going like, all right, so obviously these filmmakers have to strike out on their own and create their own kind of, uh, you know plot through mm-hmm. or you know pathway through this story mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but i wondered in the original movie there's an economy of storytelling at the beginning where judd comes over rescues i think gage from going in the you know there's foreshadowing right. there mm-hmm. and meets the 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 uh, family takes everybody down to the pet cemetery at some point i think it's seen later and uh you know basically explains what the place is if you take that out then there are things that happen later in dialogue that I don't understand how characters know these things because exactly. they were never friends with Judd. Yeah. Exactly. They like I I think going into this and being excited that John Lithgow was going to play Judd, the thing I was looking forward to most was hearing all those monologuing stories about yeah. the road, about the the history of Ludlow, about uh Timmy Baderman. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to that later, and like all that stuff, and you don't get any of that. Like no, he, they yeah, biffed. I think they one cut of the him down so much, in, mm-hmm. just in the dialogue. And again, this is you know we're sitting here as audiences of the original movie, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. there's no way that, and we saw it young. And we all said on the last time that we all saw it when we were fairly young. So you know, is it tinged with nostalgia? Right. I am surprised oh, for now. Sure. Like just looking at some of the reaction to the new movie. How many people disparage the first one? Like yeah. the first ones? No, I can't. I can't talk to those people. That'll hurt my feelings. Yeah. Yeah. I can't because I, I went after I saw the movie. I'm like, all right, I have to know everything. Yeah, and same. The, I have to be on the internet for a day, yeah. looking at all thoughts on old and new Pet Cemetery. Yeah. That's just what I do. And I came across a lot of people just going like, well, obviously the you know the not so great old Pet Cemetery. Like, How dare you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, really? That's Step like, off. It seems yeah. like it's almost a shared. Like the mainstream critics, a lot of them are saying that, you know, the first one was shit and this one's not any better. Or it's better than the first one. Or, right. <clears throat> and it's, then the it's average ratings are user, taking very hard, though. We're, the average folks, you know, <laughs> doing reviews on Letterboxd and all this stuff, we're also saying, like, you know, a good number of them are like, well, the first one. And I think, you fight know, me. come fight me. That's what I was saying to that. Even when we talked about the first one the last time, I think that there are, you know, I think the, the consensus was it's not a perfect movie, but it's a, but it's so close. And it's a, it's an effective movie. Yeah, yes, it, it is. is. It's not perfect, very effective. Yeah. effective movie. And that's what lingers in your head. But when you go back and watch it, you're like, well, that was a little clunky. This didn't need to be there. And I remember, I think uh, the last time saying that uh, one of my personal problems with the first one was the over reliance on, you know, amping up the supernatural stuff, you know, so there was always something happening. I'm like, yeah, you could ease back on that a little mm. bit, mm-hmm. which this movie does. It strips out the yeah. uh, the the maid. Yeah, Missy, Missy's Missy Dandridge. Missing. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. it takes out Timmy Baderman. Right. Timmy yeah. Ba- yeah, Timmy Baderman is reduced to a Google headline. Yeah, right. yeah. I understand it's really hard to avoid googling in a modern movie, but like. But that was, like I said, that was another one of those moments where we were looking forward to John Lithgow monologuing and maybe having yes. a flashback, and we yeah. didn't get that. Yeah. That was a time he could have spoke and that they took away from him. We also didn't get the spot flashback of him and his dog. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. with so many those, things were reduced to Google headlines. Like, yeah. Trying not to... You go in and try and see the movie you got versus right. what yeah. you had before, but right. it's, it's kind of... You know, obviously, it's hard with a movie yeah. like this, but... Those those are really good little storytelling moments for those yes. characters and for the movie as a whole. And that it's just a, like a little flavor to everything that ends up happening later. Yeah. yeah. And like we said, they just kind of don't do that. They don't give him that chance in this movie. Well, I didn't mm-hmm. feel that that Lithgow and Lewis had like a relationship. No, like, no, I did no, no. The first one. Yeah. And I'm like, that's why these things. You know why. Lewis goes with them in the first one. Why, you know, Judd feels like I need to do this for the the family is because like they connect on some level as yeah. like pals. I'm going to be that person, but in the book they have like a father son relationship, and he talks about like he's the dad I never had, the dad I always yeah. wanted, and like they're even closer in the book. Sure. So I, 
anyone who calls this movie an adaptation, it's it's not an adaptation. It could not be farther from the book. It's like they tried to make a a, a left turn every time the book no, went right. Is what it, it brings seems like. back things from the book that were missing the first time around. I would say Oz, it references. The, I wouldn't yeah. say it brings back. I well, would say it right, references. Okay. It talking about a Wendigo. The Wendigo, the thing yeah. I Wendigo. mentioned, it never gets brought up again. Yeah, I thought we were going to see that thing yeah. in the woods. No, yep. no. but yeah. that's mentioned. I think that is like mentioned in the book. The the original. Yeah, movie but you see it at the end of the book. Indians. You see it at the end of the book for a split second. I mean, it's like a line of like, and then the Wendigo stood up, and then that's it. That's like all it uh, happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the, and you hear it a lot in the book. It's like it's like did always we, around. Did we see an outline of it in the woods in this movie? I, I think didn't so. See because it. I thought I thought I did. I was looking up into the trees. It's and like I up high. Maybe yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, yeah. That's the shot. Okay. Well, they didn't make it obvious going, enough. Uh, if you no, had to work for no, it was it. not yeah, obvious. Okay. But I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's it. Well, and another thing that they like, another thing that they bring in and is no one reacts to and then is never mentioned again is the ritual of like how they bury these animals the right. kids with the masks mm-hmm. like the, all these characters are nonplussed by seeing this first of all and then like it never amounts to why anything are the, why yeah. do the kids wear masks in so this the ritual? daughter can wear a mask when she comes back yeah. I, I guarantee they reverse engineered that yeah. shit yeah. cause masks are creepy yeah. yeah it is the weirdest thing I mean I know I've seen like old Halloween photos and stuff like that where kids sure. wear masks like right. that but yeah this was like, okay, so this is a design element. Like, no one actually goes and does mm-hmm. this ever anywhere. Nope. Right. Except in a movie yes. where this is a thing that- They like, said when she comes back, freaky. wouldn't it be creepy if she was wearing a rabbit mask? And then they reverse engineered how that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because they saw a picture yeah. somewhere. Yep. Like, that yep. would be- Yeah. 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 I like yeah. how you called the characters nonplussed. I'm yeah. Like, that's a big thing in this movie. That's most, every- most people in this are just nonplussed yeah. to be but where like, they are. You ju- you are literally pulling up to move into your new house, and you see kids walking through your yard wearing animal masks, carrying a dead animal in a wheelbarrow, and, and you're like- and oh, a drum, yeah, huh. right. It's at That's this it. moment like there's no, they're not. Normal people would try and have like moments of levity because they're yeah. just watching creepy kids walk through the woods yeah. to be like, well, that's fucking weird. Mm-hmm. It's like they, they don't. I want these people to express how they're feeling out loud a little yeah. bit more. Yes, yeah, and, absolutely. You know, kind of act like human beings, right? Not like they're being some force is traumatizing them 24-7. Yeah. Like, they're yeah. still human beings. Like, right. there's... Well, you cast Jason Clark in your movie, so, uh, I mean, clearly you're looking at the most <laughs> yes. expressive uh, <laughs> actor. I mean, he's the guy who transformed into uh, Ted Kennedy for his turn. Chappaquiddick. Chappaquiddick. <laughs> yeah. Right, um, everybody? everybody? I mean, saw that? I mean yeah. do, do you want me to save my Jason Clark thing for my wrap-up? No, let's hear about Jason Clark. Okay. <laughs> uh, we talk a lot off mic about Jason Clark because I have what I call Scott Eastwood syndrome with him, mm. where I see him in a million things, and then I'm like, wait, that guy was in that movie? Because mm. I have no memory of it whatsoever. No, no, you remember his turn as the Terminator. Oh, sorry. He was Gen Wysis, John, like in, I yeah, like to call it. How dare you spoil that <laughs> movie? <laughs> he's, he's not John the Terminator. Connor. He's, John he's Connor. a Terminator. No. What? <laughs> Don't spoil that movie. No, okay. Yeah, no, uh, I really I'm go doing ahead. you a favor, dear readers. <laughs> I know Winchester, I've seen him in at least 10 movies. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Yep. Right. Uh, I saw him in Everest, which I don't recommend. Great Gatsby, Lawless, oh, Zero yeah, Dark Lawless. Thirty. Oh, yeah. He's in all these what? movies. I, know. I remember him being like in a military thing, and I'm like, was he in 13 Hours? It was Zero Dark Zero Thirty. Zero Dark Thirty. Right? Okay. Yeah, wow. yeah. Lawless, Great Gatsby. Yeah. Guys, go look at his credits. You'll be astounded at how many times you've seen Jason Clark in movies and don't realize it. Apes is best movie. Yeah. Well, but here's the thing. Like, so yeah, my thing is like, I have no memory of this guy. Like, I like see right through him, whatever. Right. And so when I heard he was casting this movie, I was like, oh no. Like this is gonna be terrible, and now now I think he's just straight up bad. Now I don't even think he's not memorable. After this movie, I'm like, no, he's bad. You know, he's Australian. I don't think yeah. that's like no excuse. Yeah. No, but I mean, there's you know, some people you got to do accents and all that other stuff. And usually, but he keeps getting these roles. He keeps getting leading man roles. He's been doing them for like over ten years now. Get your shit together, man. I liked like him in like uh, those moments where he him. has like the really teary eyes and just looks like he's been destroyed. He has he has that look in like every it's, movie. Yeah, that, that like. Right. Exa- that like exhausted, emptied look. That's yeah. why he cast that's Jason what, Clark. That's, yeah. that's what he this. can do. Yes. I feel like he didn't get go far enough with that in this movie. Mm, I agree. I no. feel yeah. like everyone was emotionless and flat and cardboard in this yeah. movie. The scene that I also you... I feel like the the dialogue contributed to that a lot though. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. The, scre- yes. the screenplay for this movie absolutely. is absolutely terrible. nobody talks yes. like an actual human being. Uh, the the big moment, uh, you know, of the uh, the losing a child in the original movie. I mean, like everybody gives Dale Midkiff shit for you know he's like, way he's, better. Uh, but that but was that hot take. Moment, he's way better. That yeah. moment lands like the agony that that man yes. suffers. <gasps> Yeah, is that over the top? I don't it's, think that yeah, in that YouTube, moment that's over the top. I would say no. anything goes in that moment, <laughs> in, right? Yeah, yeah, anything. That's yeah. what I'm saying. If yeah, you're going to so. go over the top, yeah. that's the moment to do it. That's the time to do it. To do it. You, yeah. should, you should be 
in pieces yeah. at that point. Yes. I was surprised by the lack of like impact that it yeah. had in this movie. Because they sign instead of going for like the first one does all those flash cuts and the, you know, the, the shoe, which is really effective too. Yeah, yeah. the slow mo shoe flipping across the, and the pictures the, burning. The pictures, like, yeah. Whoosh. This one does a uh, it it the sound goes down and so it's like that kind of like everybody's just numb. That you deafening get to see like them yeah. yeah, and it's like wow, we just like nothing's happening. Here. Nothing. And honestly, it like the way the accident happened, I had a lot of logistical problems with. First of all, this road's not that busy. Did you guys notice that? Mm-hmm. There, we saw two trucks go by in the whole movie. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, the first one when they get like, there, and then the one that hits her. That's it. There should have been something where they're doing more stuff outside, and just a truck in the yeah. Background. But but even that. still, she was in the road for so long before yeah. that truck came yeah. and hit her. Yeah. She was hanging out in the road for a while. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But like, and the, if she doesn't even get hit by the truck. The tanker flies off and yeah. hit, hits mm-hmm. her. Like, that's how just, she dies. We're, we're making what? this too yes. complicated. Exactly. Well, she just it, gets hit by a truck. But, but that's so they uh, because if they hit a kid with a truck, they're gonna that kid's gonna get fucked up. Yeah. yeah I was gonna say that's my next problem is that she's just off in a ditch with hardly a spot no, of blood. nothing, not a scratch. There's on hardly her. any yeah. blood. Yeah. Well, so there's like a little bit on the truck, and yeah. that's it. The way that that scene the was fake orchestrated, out yeah, mm-hmm. is like multiple times it did this because again, as I said earlier, it's relying on you having seen the original movie. So it's going to put stuff in there that I'm like, would you need this? If you weren't like it, it takes you up to, I mean, it's no secret at this point. You've seen the trailers. Uh, Ellie gets killed, not gauge in this movie. Um, And so, you know, we see this, the way the scene's orchestrated. Gage is running for the road. Lewis has to run out there. No, Gage, you know, yeah. and he actually does the, I think the, uh, the truck steers away, like sees them at the last minute yeah. and turns and ends, ends up hitting Which Ellie's is, been in the road. In that moment, that is the most emotion we see from him is the fear the, of, yeah, of Gage, Gage getting hit. Yeah. yeah. That's the most we see out of him. But mm-hmm. was that whole fake out thing? I mean, like that was there because it's like, as I'm uh, watching a remake and I know this is where Gage gets hit. Mm-hmm. That it's like, oh, that's a surprise. Gage didn't get hit. Yeah. But then the fucking the trailer. trailers yeah. for this movie, which I don't understand the marketing push at all. Like the very no. first trailer. It's the most baffling marketing I've ever seen. In, yeah. Ever. The, the first trailer is ambiguous. You're like, okay, I'm watching a remake of Pet Cemetery, and they're not showing me, obviously. They're they're high, they're holding on to the reveal, you mm-hmm. know, for people who haven't seen it. Right. And then the second trailer was like, now we're gonna spoil all the moments in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like all the yes. moments in the movie. And then when you're watching the movie, the movie is like calibrated to uh, subvert your expectation at all of these moments be- of where you've seen these things in the first movie. Even, but the trailer undid it all. But the trailer yeah, undid tra- it because exactly. it's all even yeah. exactly. uh, Judd going, looking for, you know, the intruder in his house. Yeah. And we see this shot from underneath the bed. And I'm like, well, that shot's there because we expect him to get sliced because Gage is hiding underneath the bed, yeah. or Ellie in this case. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, why else is that shot there? Right. Yeah, it's exactly. there because you saw the first movie. I'm like, this infuriates me. Oh, yeah. same. I, I'm 100% with you on that. Yeah. Another trailer and, thing, we're just like, yeah, then trailer we know ruined it. Yeah, we know yeah. it's going to happen on the stairs. Could you imagine had we all been in the theater? not knowing Ellie was the one who dies and the gauge fake out happened and then Ellie died. I might've actually like been on board for a little bit. Right. I might've yeah. gotten back on board. Yeah. For a little Definitely bit, more you know? surprised. The execution is still not great. No, I would have thought it was but ballsy at least I would have been like, Oh shit. Oh, okay. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Like, I would have been yeah. like, all right, maybe they'll yeah. keep doing something. But shit instead here. I was mad because I was like, how dare you? I was more like, how fucking dare you do the gauge? Cause like when the uh, gauge yeah, went there, I was like, well, I know it's not him. How dare you do the fake out when we all know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was very annoyed by the fake out because I was like, yeah. I'm not stupid. Don't yeah. don't do this to me. Like It would have been <laughs> it would have been better if they'd killed Gage. Kill both kill, <laughs> Well, yeah, because yeah. that would be that, that would be the book called was, Pet Cemetery. I was, well, right, <laughs> but also just like the trailer gave everything away, but then they go back and they actually kill him. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. She died. Yeah. I was yeah. I was secretly hoping for I that. I was too. But I was like, there's too much footage of Ellie dead in the trailer for that to be the case. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. And the poster, she's front and center. Yeah, on the exactly. Poster. Yeah. I'm like I was secretly what? hoping I was wrong though. I was like, <laughs> like prove me wrong movie mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it never did it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I suppose I give them credit for being like, This is ballsy. If we're gonna do a remake of a movie that everybody knows which again i'm like then this is not a good reason to make a remake nope mm. if everybody knows it that means this movie mm-hmm. is still a current thing in exactly. people's minds yeah. and what the fuck is the point of doing it again mm-hmm. but at least so then we're going to subvert their expectations and like make the third act a completely different story like okay it's not pet cemetery then it's fucking wakewood or mm-hmm. something right you ever see like basically the etymology of this story is the monkey's paw yeah it right? really is 
to uh, Pet Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And then there was a movie called Wakewood with uh, Aiden Gillen from uh, Game oh, of Thrones she, yeah, that's and, right. and Timothy Spall. And it was a it, it took place in uh, in England. It was like this folk horror thing. And they lose their daughter and they bring her back to life. And she comes back and starts, you know, I'm like, and she was like 10 years old. And I'm like, okay, I saw this before. Right. I'm like, so yeah. this is not a genius thing that the, well, uh, the maker of like, the new Pet Cemetery like, came the, out. Like, the... <sighs> The original Pet Cemetery and the book are so bleak, and the bleakness is compounded by the fact that it's like a two year old that dies. So when you shift that to an eight, nine, ten year old, like that's already less tragic. So I don't like I don't understand what the point of that was, other than like we just don't want to make the same movie, which is not a good reason to me. You know what I wonder, and because uh, I uh, there was some interview that I read with these two directors where they sign up, kind of alluded to this or something that the idea of like working with a child actor is an extremely difficult thing, especially at that age and blah blah blah. And I'm like, Miko, he was fucking, fucking dead in the 80s. telling me, yeah, that like somehow in the past we were able to do this, and, and now, now we you can't. can't. Or now you're like, well, it's too difficult, and we can't fucking create the kid with CG. It'd be, it wouldn't look good. So we're just going to make the kid ten years. We old. We have a twenty five million dollar budget, Colin, but we can't, we can't do a two or three year old actor. That's <laughs> no. just not yeah. going to work. I mean, to their credit, they also couldn't create a realistic CGI truck, yeah, uh, tanker mm -hmm. at a certain point. So maybe they couldn't do a kid. Maybe they're just like, ha, ah, I don't but know like, if we can do it. A lot of the like, I don't know, like the thing that makes the original so great is that like. Miko Hughes doesn't know he's in a horror movie. Yeah. He's having a great time yeah. running around with that rubber yeah. scalpel, you know? And like, I, like, it always makes me laugh that reverse footage of him falling backwards in the hallway. Cause like, yeah. it's clearly like he was laying down and stood up and ran. Like, they yeah. reverse the footage. Yeah. No Dude, fair. No use, fair. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Use, yeah. use old school tricks like that. Like, you don't have to Man, CGI the show. Man, I didn't know show. that, uh, you know, that, that, that uh, a 10 year old girl would be creepier than a three year old kid until I saw a pet cemetery. Said no one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that girl's a ham sandwich. She's terrible. She is terrible. She's a Her fucking what, ham Jette sandwich. Jette Lawrence? Oh, she it doesn't matter. She or... she won't go anywhere. She's it doesn't terrible. matter. Well, is she terrible or because... The I mean, there's a lot of circumstances. I, laugh, I out loud laughed at some of the shit she was saying. We well, it squanders so much potential, right? Uh, it it squanders... The whole idea of the, the story kind of... Uh, you know, it it raises a lot of metaphysical questions of, you know, like uh, if because uh, I think the first one, there was a whole idea that the conversation about if church dies is like, but if you believe in something hard enough, you know, would God let, you know, my mm -hmm. cat come back if I really if I pray hard, like why, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. all these kind of things. They didn't like, establish any of that. They don't. They just, no. they, 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 there were scenes that where they were talking about it, but it seemed like it was more trying to build the character for Rachel. Yes. And her yes. past trauma. Yeah. Uh, oh, we oh, we're about gonna that. get to that <clears throat> fucking shit. Oh, yeah. I was so oh mad at that. God. That, that well, maybe, almost made me walk let's out. Let's please honestly. make sure that any of these things, like we're gonna talk about that, let's not forget to yeah. talk about yeah. them. Because well, this let's is make old. some yeah. old. Because yeah. we gotta yes, talk so about. Say, please write well, this down. This might be a long episode. We gotta talk about. We have to talk about these things. I don't want to sidetrack us. This is a minor detail before I forget. But do you guys get really irrationally annoyed when they change minor things that are inconsequential? Because it's like, why change it? For example, they changed it from them being from Chicago to being from Boston. Like why? Yeah, why don't. change that? Why does that matter? Like, yeah, but, uh, see, it? <laughs> see, that didn't bother me. But, I, like but that it does make a difference, though, because it's driving distance and not flying distance. So you don't have the whole airport thing with Pascal. Right. That whole thing got cut out. Well, and the reason that you know, like, and uh, and Rachel being gone when uh, Church is buried and yeah. all that other stuff is like it doesn't work the same way this mm -hmm. time. Um, or when Gage is, yeah, it was when Church and yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Um, the changes that irritated me were less about like, I mean, there's know, so many. Yeah. Take but, your fucking pick, but, Colin. There's so many changes. Well, the, the key phrase of dialogue is, you know, the heart, the, 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 the stone of, or the, sorry, the, the, the stone the, of a man's heart. The, the, the man's heart, heart is stonier. stonier. Yeah. yeah. It's a it throwaway it line can, yeah. in this. And I'm like, but it has no meaning because Nothing. you left out the part that women have secrets, but the heart of the, the yeah. soil of a man's heart is stonier. Yeah, and and yeah. we have to keep this a secret Se yeah. because this is a secret thing we're doing. And I'm like, okay, I get that in the first one. Yeah. And this one, it's just like, but the sort of a man's heart is stony or Lewis. And you're like, everyone yeah. seemed like okay. they didn't want to say that stuff. And they <laughs> right. took it away from Pascal. That was his line. He was supposed to say that. Yeah, as a warning to. Yeah, uh, he says it while he's dying to Lewis. And instead, he just says the barrier cannot be broken. And they cut down Pascal to fucking they, nothing. That, okay, movie. that first 20 minutes of this movie is on a fucking train. I mean, it, they're just. It's going so quick. They're going. They don't. It's like they don't allow for anything to like. 
Like, let's give it a minute. Let's Let breathe, it breathe here yeah. for a second. And I think yeah. that's what a movie like this, with this heavy of a subject matter, needs. Yeah. I think the better yeah. version, and again, like I said, I'm not making apologies <laughs> for the first movie. I love it. Don't get it's, me wrong, Michaela. No, but I, I realize I that like, you could make a better movie than that movie. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Uh, I, I forgot. Oh, no, Colin, I was going to say, a... like, but this isn't it. But, uh, the, uh... <laughs> no, Colin, don't you remember nine months ago when I was really excited for this movie and then that disappeared really? Like, I, there was a point in time I was looking forward to this remake. And <laughs> See, I've always been sitting there going, like, uh, they don't need to, to do this. You know, it's like, but whatever, we have it and there it is. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's the, op the, the opportunity, I guess, leading up to a movie that uh, they are going to improve upon right. the old one so there's much. There's always opportunity. Yeah. I. I guess like my mind goes when you when you remake something that I mean to to us like sitting around this table like it's a well known subject matter I don't know how non horror people feel if it's a really well known thing or not but I'm like this is a really bleak and heavy story that's about grief and should be really emotional and hard to watch so why why is this not an actor's opportunity to really like ham it up and get something for the real and why don't you get really well known people to like really give it their all and instead everyone in this is just like I thought doesn't amy, want to be here i thought amy is it some some simon 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 yeah i thought she was doing good work but was limited against by, no one yeah i mean it yeah. was like in this a better Rachel. movie yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah she's been in uh she was in alien resurrection she was in your next i mean she's done a bunch of genre stuff she was in one of my favorite movies of the year whatever the the 2012 or something it was upstream color but she's okay. been kind of working oh, her way yeah, up yeah that's right and now she she's was in, in these yeah and now she's getting into you know hollywood films um but i thought she did good yeah. but it was like but the character was underwritten yeah and the and focus that she yeah. has on her, yeah, because of this whole thing about that we're going to hammer home that she had a traumatic event when she was a kid with her sister. I never let's, got over. Let's get into it. Let's get into Zelda. 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 Oh, the scariest part of the original movie, arguably. Yes. A 30-year-old man playing like a 10-year-old girl. Yes. Which is Crazy a, makeup. Which, I mean, looking back on it now, is a, a brilliant choice. casting choice. Yeah. A brilliant. brilliant choice. Oh, yeah. Well, you you can't do better than that. That's this, ingenious right there. But this is my question that I always have for these filmmakers when they go into this. Uh, I had a lot of flashbacks uh, to an emotional state, I guess, or yes. a, 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 an intellectual state, maybe, that I had when I watched The Nightmare on Elm Street remake, where I was sitting uh, that's there a good comparison. when there are scenes that, you know, that eventually you have to get to these, the, the tent pole scenes in right. a, in the pet cemetery story these right. are the scenes you have to do right we have mile markers that yeah we're gonna just yeah. you can change things and between but eventually you're movie. coming to these mile markers and when you come to those mile markers to justify a remake's existence you have to do it better than they did it the first time around yes. that is the fucking yeah. yes. contract that we signed it's like yes. you got to do exactly. it as yeah. good as or better than the first time around yes and, and as good as might not here, be enough well, I was just like, well, yeah. how do you top? Well, I was like, how do you top Judd in the first one? Fred Gwynn. Yeah. You don't. You can't. I mean, John Lithgow is like playing he, it different, but it was like. All right. Unpopular opinion. I feel like he's not even trying in this he's, I, I feel like, like he, he was trying. phoning it in. But it this felt... is subdued John Lithgow. Yeah. 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 Um, Which yeah. is not what, what I want. I was I was waiting for him to ramp up to the Progresso Soup yelling and yeah. it never <laughs> happened. Yeah. You know, like it never. He, he, yes. I, he got I wanted to hear so his Maine to accent, you know, because he's like uh, he's been born and bred in the wilds of Maine. But yeah. No, yeah. we didn't nope. get the. Uh -uh. No, the. Uh, yeah, no. He's not nothing. a very likable person either. That's also a thing. Yeah. Like I didn't like Judd in this one. They no. give him his wife back from the book, uh, and that whole thing about you know. But like, it doesn't matter. Like, it does. It's inconsequential. Yeah. 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 It's like okay, you gave that back. I don't know. You mm -hmm. know. So what? Yeah. Um, but, but Zelda. I'm every sorry. single time, yeah, Zelda. It's like okay, so how do we? You have to do Zelda better than you did it in the first one. Yeah. And what's their solution? I. Their you solution. Got me. Oh. I, this is the part where I, like. I almost walked out at this part because in the in this in the book and in the original movie, Rachel is not responsible for killing Zelda. She happens to die when she's home alone with her. Right. And she feels very guilty about yeah, it, and right. it's something that has haunted her whole life. In this movie, we can't have subtlety. We need a no. Direct yeah, we literally have to hit you over the head. Rachel of it. basically yes. kills. Right. Zelda. She does kill her. Right. Yeah. First she, of all, I'm just going to say it now. Zelda's a fucking idiot. Yeah. For the way she dies in this movie. Yes. Yeah, so but continue on. Rachel uses, they have a dumbwaiter in their house. 
Um, she's supposed to feed her. She puts the food in the dumbwaiter and she says, I'm not supposed to use it because it doesn't work all the time. Dumbwaiter goes up. You hear Zelda crawl across the floor, which, which doesn't make sense because in all the other materials, she's chained to the bed. Yeah. That's yeah. the whole thing. She can't get out of bed. But yeah. But apparently she does. She right. Yeah. Apparently she does in this one. Oh, in the book, she's like literally tied to the bed. Oh. Yeah. Um, and that's why they're like, that's why Lewis is like, your parents are shitheads because they tied your sister to the bed. And, mm. um, but she, you literally hear her crawl across the floor crawl into the dumb waiter yeah. i guess and the dumb yeah waiter fails falls down something. and she dies but somehow she falls on top i didn't even she understand fa- the i didn't get it either like yeah what was happening yeah here. okay i'm glad that you're all saying that because i'm like what the fuck did i miss here i was I like know. i guess she's an yes. idiot like yeah it, it, makes, idiot. it makes no fucking sense <laughs> she's an idiot. it yeah. makes no fucking sense i guess sense. she climbed into the because like if into she an empty, do you know how much She's got to be an idiot. Yeah, you know she's yeah. moving around. You have to do to fall into the fucking dumbwaiter when you're crawling up. But she doesn't even fall. And then she falls on top of the carrot, the yeah. case yeah. for the dumbwaiter. Yeah. She falls also, on top of it. Also, how the fuck did she get in there? Yeah, she can't fucking move. She's hard bedridden. Hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And but now this the, the thing that makes me mad is like this changes it so that Rachel is responsible for killing yeah. her technically. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's not just. Oh, yeah, yep. I was and, bothered by and, that. And it also sets up uh, an addition that this movie brings us, which is uh, Rachel is constantly hearing people crawling across the roof, things falling down behind the walls. She's afraid of cabinets. Yeah, any cabinets she, she sees, sees, she's afraid of. Visions in the cabinets of Zelda falling down. Yeah, it's like okay, so basically the the problems that I had with the first movie have been replaced with a new problems, new of like, worse problems. What the fuck is the point of this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know? There was Creepy a sounds. there was a part in the third act where she was like in the kitchen and she looks over at the kitchen cabinet and it like started moving a little bit and then like I think like blood came out or something. Yeah. I started yeah. laughing because uh, I was like, oh my god, she's afraid of all cabinets. First yeah, if she is so traumatized. <laughs> Traumatized by everything at this point. Yeah. What? Why go back to the house when you're already having this tough a time? Right. At your new place, mm-hmm. you're already having these uh, visions, these uh, auditory hallucinations, what have you. Mm-hmm. Why go back to the house where this fucking thing happened? Yeah. Like you're trying to get away because you can't be here right now mm-hmm. and you can't deal with this trauma. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna go home and what? Go back to the house. Your fucking sister died. In! Yeah. Why would you? Yeah. yeah. Why would you go back to see why your parents? Why would you go back to that house? Your yeah. parents why? were a big part of the problem why? too. So yeah. you know. You figure you want to go to like go uh, to a hotel. Uh, the Miami Beach. Go to Hawaii. Yeah. 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 Somewhere, somewhere yeah. sunny and yeah. someplace yeah. where there's can, no association. Right. Of any no kind trauma. Of trauma yeah. Let's get away from trauma <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I was literally like, oh my god, she's just afraid of any cabinet she sees. She's like, oh Zelda. She is. Like I'm like, this is so fucking stupid and like the the scene when like the the sink was like rattling and like the ceiling was shaking i was like oh no because like this movie tries to employ a lot of conventions of modern ghost story yes, movies yeah and shoves it into this movie where it doesn't belong mm-hmm. like, yes it does and i was just like mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah especially when ellie comes back yeah. i'm like oh god this could and fit plug this into any ghost movie that's yeah. come out in the past 15 well, that's years the, thing. the whole third act of this film basically you know they're like oh we're really clever because we've restructured it now mm-hmm. and this was actually to be fair, I sat there through like the first whatever hour and 15 minutes kind of being like, OK, for the most part, this is the same movie, even though the girl got hit. It's still following the same major beats are the same. And I'm like, OK, so this is what this is. The reason for making this movie is we're bringing a little girl back to life instead of a toddler. So it's going to be different. Mm-hmm. And so this is where I was like the most invested and I could just. As I as it progressed, because the idea being right, the the opportunities that you have here are um, in this movie. The wife is aware that uh, that the kid's been brought back to life. Mm-hmm. This is like Which, a, a seismic oh my change. God. Yes, that Lewis basically Earth says, shaking. like your daughter. I brought your daughter back to life. I need more time with her. Yeah, yeah. Says. earth shaking. Yeah. So that's number one. Number two. A 10-year-old is arguably more articulate than a three-year-old. Yes. And having come back from the dead might be able to articulate something about the experience. Apparently, yeah. she has, apparently when you get buried in the pet cemetery, not only does it take like two hours for you to come back, but uh, you have Real full quick. awareness of everything that happened. Like yeah. the timeline with church really bothered me because like there were, he got into bed really late and she was like, oh, what time is it? He's like, oh, don't worry. You know, whatever. And he gets into bed. And the next morning they're talking to her being like, church ran away. Mm-hmm. Which I hated that they didn't commit to the church died. They were just like, church ran away. Right. Yeah, um, that was because, all awkward yeah. because they didn't send them away exactly. for Thanksgiving or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were gone when this thing happens between yeah. Judd and Louis. Exactly. In this one, the family's still it's there. It's more complicated for no reason. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's still home when he's off burying church but, and church coming yeah. back. But yeah, so she so they're they're saying church ran away and she's like, Well, church was in my room last night. And I was like, wait, so like Lewis buried him at like one AM and by like three, four AM he was back in her room. So like the turnover in the pet cemetery is immediate, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Apparently. Also, Whatever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's like, give up that's, that, Colin. Colin, yeah. that's a good. Ad- that's the correct answer to have. <laughs> yeah, Whatever. Right. But and also, you put like, it in, it comes back out. If your movie's trying to be them- uh, thematic in any way, you tell the girl that the the cat died. That's like, the that's is, the whole point of this movie. The point of this whole thing is yeah, the cat you have didn't. to deal with the death. It's yeah. The death. yeah, you're dealing with the death. But that of scene it. becomes why can't God get his own cat? Rachel. It becomes about Rachel and her like whole like squeamishness about like what if Zelda. Because so, she believes in resurrection and an afterlife, right. and Rachel believes that Zelda is still out there and will at and some point coming back for her. And it's, it's so bad. fucking awkward and bizarre. It feels like a totally separate movie. Yeah, it feels like two completely different movies. It's like you're you're missing the focus, yeah. right of the of the story. Yes, <laughs> it's so awkward. Yeah. Many times, many yeah. times, I felt that. Yeah, you know what I did enjoy though. <clears throat> Tell me. I want to know. What did you I'm going to tell you. This was a, a brilliant addition to this film. Okay. Because. <laughs> oh, uh, all right. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're saying this, out there. No, I'm ready for you this. you got to deliver, man. I'm ready for this. Okay. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Um, instead of the exposition. Uh, well, Judd does deliver exposition. A little you know, bit. Yeah, Indians yeah, yeah. And blah, blah, blah. I mean, is, uh, does he do anything else? Because we mm-hmm. live in the internet age, uh, yeah. Lewis is able to get on Google and start Googling. Like, has anyone Timmy ever- Timmy Baderman, yep. Because his cat came back, is like, this must be a thing in the history that, you know, <laughs> this area must be something going on. The cat and came so he back. Googles it. He <laughs> finds out that uh, there was some animal came back. And then the second thing that he looked at- Oh, a bull came back. Was a bull came back. Right. That's in the book. And I was just like, okay, I don't care if that's in the book. This is fantastic because all I could see, like, I stopped whole, watching the movie at that point because I was like, we just these guys dragging a bull, yeah, drag yeah. a bull over yeah. the fucking like deadfall, right? Oh yeah. yeah, and into the woods like five miles, dragged a bull, a, a, a prize bull. bull, so that even <laughs> if it was a little bull, oh yeah, no, they, in it's the book, a bull. in the book they talk about how like. Wow, he must have loved that bull a lot to do that, right? <laughs> must but then love in the that book bull. they also talk about so like he, he it came back, he brought yeah. it in the yard and he was like, Oh my god, yay, my bull's back and he's like, you know, he basically treats it like a dog, yeah. pretty much. But then they talk about how like the bull, like every once in a while would just be standing in the middle of a road and they'd be like, Okay, that's weird and then after that it started like charging people that and then it starts killing death. people. And then they were like <laughs> But like you know, bulls are already kind of aggressive animals as it is. So yes. for a while, they're just kind of like, well, that's how they are. He gets out and he does that. And so it, it took a long time for them to like <laughs> because of the nature of the animal. It took a long time for them to realize like something was not right. Right. So, you ever, do you ever see the video of like the ram that's just loose in a town and they don't know what to do with it and it just keeps charging and attacking people? <laughs> yeah. <it was laughs> now like, I know yeah. where the ram yeah. came yeah. from. Yeah. Pet cemetery. Yeah, pet cemetery. <laughs> Let's Holy talk shit. about the pet cemetery here real quick because it's ugly. the. A whole the 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 ghost there was well the first one has this kind of, I mean that's a that was a brilliant shot brilliant I don't the design of the pet cemetery bring down the, the brilliance a little bit okay the, well in the first one the oh, in the Indian, first one. Okay. The yeah, Indian yeah, yeah. burial ground there. design the the the, uh, the spherical nature yeah. of it which is echoed in the layout of the the kids pet cemetery yes. right uh, this one they crawl over the deadfall they go out in the woods and. I don't even know what the fuck that place looked like. No, right. no idea. Right. It's cool in the original. Like, yeah. It yeah. Looks like they climb like Indian, a mountain an, face and they shit. Do. Yeah. It's yeah. An Indian barrel ground. Mm-hmm. And there's some like, yeah, like you said, the layout and the spherealness. Yeah. Of it. Don't worry, like, Colin. Cool. There's stairs on this one. Yeah. Oh, that's right. There were there's stairs, straight up stairs, stairs staircase. carved into the rocks. I straight up laughed when I saw that. I was like, oh my God, there's a legit staircase up to the Micmac burial ground. But like, they never give you like an aerial. There's no, no they don't. There's no yeah, there's uh, nothing, establishing nothing. shot. No. I guess no. is what we're saying. No. It's just right. That would cost you too much see, to yep. CGI render. You Colin. see the staircase and then the yeah, actual the green spot where they're buried. Yeah. And it's yeah, it's green screen and or that or it's stu- it's very studio it's bound. Very stu- it's all the on like yeah, it's, it's all like on sets. Brightly blue lit with you know the 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 flowing white smoke in the background, mm-hmm. the fog. fog and I'm just like, this. you know, I was sitting there like this just is the trying best to imagine the dark episode I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, but that's, was, that's the quality it's on. I was trying to imagine like what would this be like right there. I saw like what the creepy version of Pet Cemetery could be like if you actually shot at night in the dark and the real fucking woods mm-hmm. right yeah. you know it would be like totally a whole different thing and I, at that point i was actually going like you know again it was where i was drifting i'm like if you actually had like a filmmaker with a certain style and then i was like maybe you'll hate me for this but i was like you know i would be interested to see the rob zombie 
Pet Cemetery because like that would be distinct. I'd be into that. Oh, you know, like that I'm would so be. On board it would for be that. at least interesting. Maybe not good. It would have a perspective. Yes, it would yeah. have a perspective. And then I was yes. like, what if Ari Aster made Pet Cemetery? And yeah. I'm like, that would be the heavy fucking heaviest fucking movie. Can we, yeah. can we just give it? Can we uh, somehow erase this and give it to Ari Aster? Yeah, because yeah, like, hereditary. I mean, I'd watch basically, that. honestly, I'd watch that movie. But hereditary kind of treads some of these. It's similar. Yeah, it's yeah, very. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of grief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It hits a lot of. I'm just gonna watch that again and get the bad taste of this movie. It hits a lot of the same notes. That's for sure. It. It, if as long as yeah. Rob Zombie doesn't write the movie, yeah, just yeah, directs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then I'm then I'm fine with yeah. the Rob Zombie doing the Pet Cemetery. At least Even it would have been art different. Direct, you know? right, art directing art direct and, and maybe visually, yeah. yeah that, then that yeah. would be fine. I'd be yeah, up for that. God, that'd be so. I'm that'd so be pretty into cool. that. I'm so into it. Just somebody. I don't because, care who it is. Just somebody. Somebody. Who's somebody. A better director than somebody. Somebody. Actual person. Yeah. Someone, because respect. Not it. Some, yeah. Someone with something to say. Someone with like, a vision. Yeah. yeah. A vision. With, uh, yeah. Flair, Who's not just doing it Fuck, because you know it was a job. Bring in Tim Burton. Give me yeah. some gnarled trees yeah. in that shit. I'll yeah. take a Tim Burton pet cemetery. Yeah. 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 I guess right? Frankenweenie is kind of his version of pet cemetery. That is true. True. And I love that movie. That movie is kind of heartwarming and charming. Like it's got a little color in it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, um, now that you say that, I'm like, man, literally, like anyone could have done a better job. Like, and I don't, I don't blame the directors because, right, like, the from what I was hearing, like they stepped into something that. that was like half done. You know, like they stepped in, and it seemed like the studio was kind of just looking for people to run to the day to day and not have any actual say. In but things. does it also feel like, or is it just me? It's like now you have a generation of like film school graduates, and all they watch is modern. You know, this is com- to be competitive in today's marketplace. Yeah. This is what movies look like and how they function and how they're edited and how they're paced. And so this is the conjuring school of only James oh, Wan can actually, you know, like he has perspective and craft these sequences where these guys right. understand the visual references and the importance of the visual reference, but they don't know how or why suspense works, you know? It's mm-hmm. like if we put the, we draw the score down and somebody walks into a room and they're like, hello, hello, like mm-hmm. we're on edge. But I'm like, no, we're not. We've seen this 500,000 mm-hmm. times in my lifetime. Yes. <laughs> this doesn't work. I wasn't scared at all. No. This whole movie. No. no. Speaking of, once. did you guys feel like there was almost no score to this movie whatsoever? Mm-hmm. Only when it was heavy handed in the It was the just ethereal noises. Just like, yeah, it's Christopher Young. He did Nightmare on Elm Street 2 way back in the day and he did Sinister recently. He did Hellraiser. It, it Hellra- needed, the score for Hellraiser is from this fucking guy. It needed something punchier. Mm-hmm. It needed something more dramatic and punchier, I thought. Yeah. I, I felt like a good score could have carried it a lot farther. Well, the good score was done in the first one, the yep. Elliot Goldenthal, really mournful piano yeah. thing. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's creepy. Um, well, okay, we got to get into the, the God, end of this movie. And if we have time, we got to talk about Pascal. Hey, we can go also, along on this one. Don't rush yourself. In the world. We got a lot of thoughts. We got, we got, time. all right, well, we, let's talk, talk about Pascal. Yourself. We had a hard time keeping it in last night, for listeners. We also, <laughs> like, three of us saw this together, and, and I think we all had our hands. Right, we, the, yeah. I think we all had our hands on we our were face all, like, at the end. One word sentences over Messenger, just like, uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I, wow. I, oh, I, yep. I texted a few people I know, and I was like, I need you to text me as soon as you've seen Pet Cemetery. And they were like, why? I was like, because I don't have anyone to talk to about it right now. And I have to, like, I need to, like, explode all over someone with, like, my thoughts right now. Um, well, the character of Pascal in the first one basically serves as the harbinger of the doom to come and warns Lewis and mm-hmm. then but he's charming uh, and has humor also yeah he's a personality and, yeah. he seems relevant which and, I yeah. and he seems to care and he's a yeah. and he's like a, a hitchhiker road tripper kind of dude yeah, yeah. Like, he's just, I, dig, he's I dig him yeah. even in the first one I was kind of like you know like does the movie need this character but his basic function is to provide a well he gets Ellie to come or Rachel to come back from Chicago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Not Chicago, Boston, Colin. Boston, it's Boston, well, this where, movie. From wherever she is, right. to, back into you know where the doom is going to happen. And in this movie, it's like, it's this guy who, you know, whispers, because that's what's creepy. He has no personality in this yeah, movie. No. None. And they've cut right. him down to like a third of the lines he had in the original. Like, there's yeah. no, there, you know, like, there's that scene where she's at the airport, and the scene where she's at the car rental, and he's like, well, what about this one with the scratched up side? And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. none of that was in there. Um, he doesn't get to del- deliver a man's heart a stonier line. He like yeah. even his scenes with Lewis are so short and mm-hmm. like Very just short. there seems to be like like you don't really get a sense in this movie of why he's even there. Yeah, 
Yeah, um, you could have cut him out of this movie yes. and not changed Didn't the fucking need him. movie. Yeah, yeah. Because Didn't need him. basically yeah. he does the same function uh, in this case uh, because uh, uh, Gage is alive. Gage is with Rachel. Gage is seeing Pascal, and Rachel says, "I want to go home," even though. Uh, Gage can't articulate yeah. but, like Ellie could in the first one. But this is the frustrating thing about it. So in the original, Ellie's saying like, I'm having these like dreams and visions mm-hmm. about this guy named Pax, Pax Cow is what she says. Right. But in this I one, remember. but in this one, like um, Lewis straight up told her about Pascal. So when Gage mentions that, she's like, oh my God, that's that kid that died and then runs back. So they completely change that for no reason yeah she just has you know basically she wants she doesn't like being in this one the motivation seems to be she doesn't like to be where zelda died at her yeah. parents house yeah and that's, so she yeah, wants to go back home point. even though right. she chose to go back there as sean pointed yeah. out yeah. Yeah. yeah well she goes back home uh Didn't, this um, is actually after so ellie comes back has these boring non-philosophical you know conversation with her dad I'm she dead. has total awareness I'm dead, that's right. i have a problem with apparently mm-hmm. if you come back from this pet cemetery you have complete awareness that you died and came back yeah um meanwhile in the original you know timmy baderman was a zombie that wanted to kill people that's basically how you come back in the original is just like a bloodthirsty mindless zombie pretty much in this one you have full awareness of what you are and can go through the nor- like motions of a normal human somewhat and then some develop a really you know, bloodless later by in this one why judd would say hey let's go bu- bury your cat in a, in a fucking well, it's supposed cemetery. to be that you know the wendigo is like possessing these people and like calling them to that like the thing that this movie i was hoping would explain <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but didn't, does not get that yeah well i said again you know like well the there's book. that part where he hears the whispering over yeah. the deadfall you're supposed to con- connect a million right. dots and from that is the the very like very like um, she loved that cat, right? You love her? <laughs> oh, I right. guess. Yeah. yeah. I guess. All right, yeah. I'll show you It's this. like, I get it. In the original movie, it's because Ellie is gone. When this right. happens, like, I don't want my daughter coming back and finding that, or, you know, that right. the cat's dead, so we'll do this. Um, Especially because she had a bad dream that Church yeah, got hit by died. a car, yeah. But in this one, and, well, okay, so both movies uh, portray the dead person. Judge ha- Judd has a history with, like, you know, dead things coming back to life. Um Lewis obviously sees Church. Church comes back to life, and in both movies, he comes back as this evil little fucking ferocious beast, mm-hmm. right? In both of them. Yeah. And it's like, and and Judd's dog, you know, in the first one comes back, and I'm like, the book at least did it a little better, where, like, it comes back as a cat. Yeah. But, you know, clearly it's off. It's a soulless cat, and yeah, it does ultimately probably lead to the death of, you know, but it doesn't present itself as like an evil demon cat from hell in the movies. It's a demon cat from hell. And I'm like, mm-hmm. why in the fuck would anybody bring these things back to life? if like, you have to kill them again because they're these evil things. Okay. Right? But, but when he scratched Ellie, I thought she deserved it in this movie because like, okay, he was really dirty and he's like covered in like dried blood yeah. and blood. And they talk about how gross he is. Like, first of all, give the cat a fucking bath. Yeah. Give him yes, a bath. Yeah. Exactly. They, they, yeah. they never give him people. a bath, but she's dry brushing like his matted fur and it looks yeah. like it hurts. It, it looks, looks yes. like it's tugging on him really hard. So he scratches her. I'm like, well, yeah. 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 yeah you're dry brushing like a cat's matted fur. That shit's going to hurt. He's going to yeah. scratch you. Why, mm. why didn't we get, uh, a chunk of like Ellie coming out in the hairbrushing scene in the tub. I was waiting I for was that. I was waiting for like I was waiting that for would that. be too too much apparently. Uh, apparently. Yeah. yeah. So I'm he's like very he's brushing her hair yeah. and I'm, it does feel very neutered. I'm yeah. like I need I need something here. Yeah. Like this child got hit by a truck. She didn't just, look yeah. like she got hit by a truck. No. no. Just, She's just, just fine. The, just the eye is kind of it's slid down. down. Yeah. Like Which pale. Church's eye was like that too. But I just you know they got hit by a fucking truck. It just felt like so much. Like, I mean, if you're gonna commit to this and have this new Hit third which act, you should. You know, yeah. you're missing so many opportunities uh-huh. to basically stop the fucking movie and just have like conversations that are creepy beyond belief. Which is why yeah. I thought we were going through the first third of the movie so quickly. Yeah, yeah I thought we so get quickly. To this. I thought we were going through it so quickly because they have all right, they have things they want to do in yeah. the second and third act yeah. that they need more time for. So I uh, like hopefully that's it, yep. and that's why we're going through the first half of this so quickly. I'm so like, all right, the book, maybe we are. The book is a very slow read. Um, this it, is what I hear. This is what it I've is like a today. lifetime movie for two thirds of the book, and then like okay, so I listened to the audiobook, and the audiobook was seventeen hours. And Gage doesn't die until about 10 hours in. Mm. 
So 30 some chapters halfway through the book until he dies. Wow. So And then he doesn't come back until yeah, because And then he doesn't come back until like another 20 chapters. Yeah, but you're yeah. dealing with the pet cemetery and the mythology and church. I mean, yeah. that's the whole thing. Yeah. It's like we brought this evil thing. But there's thing. a lot of just building the relationship with Judd yeah. and like the story goes from like they move in like August and like the story goes until the next May. So it goes right, over like seasons. a whole year. Mm-hmm. They talk about them going trick or treating, Thanksgiving, Christmas, like all the holidays, the whole school year basically passes yeah. in this book. Right. So, it even felt and my memory of it is not too great, but it even felt like there was a, some seasons, like we went through a mm-hmm. little bit in the original movie. Yeah. And this one, they're just like, hey, it's the middle of summer. Hey, hey it's, it's Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. yeah, It looks yeah. the same, yeah. but trust us, it's Halloween. Right. Yeah. Now the cat's dead. Yeah, yeah, the cat's dead and we have no relationship with each other, but I'm going to tell you your cat's dead. Yeah, everything's just very cold. I think that's very the thing cold. there. I know yes. there isn't the human emotion that the first one, knock it all you will actually somehow figured out how to do or convey. Right. Yeah. It feels like none of the actors want to be in this movie in this one. Like they just feel so just like phoning it in. And yeah. I don't understand I think it's that. that's the fault. I think that is the fault of the director. So whenever so. you yeah. say that it's the actors yeah. are doing what they do all the time. It's your the job to push them. Are unexperienced and aren't very good, I think. No. I mean, yeah. I saw Starry Eyes. I, I wasn't that impressed with it. And it's I mean, like, but still, that's one movie they did out of how right, many? Yeah. You know, so even if that like, is good, that's I mean, one. You know? But that's what everybody does now. It's like you do one movie on an independent level right. for like $5,000 or $500,000. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, now we're going to give you like a $15,000 or $50 million right. movie. Right. It's right. like, why? And I, like, think, I think that's... I think that's apprenticeships and stuff like that. Like make right. people work and learn the fucking this is, craft. This is... I, and I, I chalk this up to corporations being like, look, we're grabbing these people that you like. Mm-hmm. This is why you should come watch our movies. They have a social media following. Because, right, because we're their... getting yeah. the people... You like these movies that, you know, they, right. these, the, from filmmakers who have like... They've made movies that have some a little bit of character and all that stuff, and like we're gonna bring them on to ours because we right. enjoy all this shit. And just but like, now it's so accelerated, ah. it's like they made one movie, one movie. Yeah, like, look at you, that yeah. Colin Trevorrow. Yeah, yeah. made one movie. Yeah, exactly. And we gave he's him the most the world. egregious example. It of is that. the most yeah. egregious. Yeah. But, yeah. Which like, you could have put anybody in that fucking movie, and it would have made fifty billion dollars. Fuck Colin Trevorrow. All right, yeah. I'm done with that. Yeah, it, but like. <laughs> Yeah, we'll save that for another episode. Yeah, that's another episode. But um, our anti Colin Trevorrow episode, I guess. <laughs> but like, could you imagine if like Fede Alvarez had done this movie? How good it would be! Like, he at least knows how to build suspense. I and mean, like, that guy, yeah. and he wouldn't hold craftsman. back. He doesn't hold back, right? Like when he, especially like, I know he doesn't want to be the remake guy, and I get sure. it. Nobody wants to be the remake guy. And like I, maybe that's why Marcus uh, Spell wants to be the remake guy. He, yeah, he does. He was for a he while. Was, yeah, but you know, and I guess. Alexander Aja was was the kind of the remake guy for a while too, mm-hmm. so I can get why like if he couldn't have Gage dying, he would walk away. I totally get it, but like I would much rather see his version or Fede Alvarez's version of this movie. I feel like it would have yeah, been more I, worth yeah. my I time. Mean, anybody, you know? it would have been more interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, visually, just in its you this know, is a, sequences, yeah. it's like this is flat as all fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you feel that like? I felt like the transition between scenes and everything was very stuttering and not well done. Like I felt yes. like it ended at weird moments and transitioned at weird moments and it didn't seem to have a good flow or a good pace at all. Right. No, it really doesn't. Yeah. No. I, I guess our, our advice is, uh, hey, independent filmmakers, make like six Four or movies. five movies? Make yeah. six movies. Then yeah, go something. on to something yeah. like this. Like, De- develop that. Whole they used to have to do that. They used, they used to, used to they have used to make to. like you know, but but I think the markets changed so much that the, sure. those opportunities yeah. aren't there. You can't right. make a series of independent movies and have them be hits and then it's, eventually it's very, go to the studio. It's level. very small. Yeah, like, now it's guys make who one, do it and know how to do to it, studio. and they'll make like they'll make ten movies, but mm-hmm. they're that's all very small shit. They they're trying really hard to like keep it that way, mm-hmm. and then. You know they they move up. That's gradually. right. When's, when's somebody going to give Joe Swanberg a bunch That's, of money? Yeah. That, this is what I was, Joe Swanberg is the one I'm thinking of. But it's like Joe Swanberg and even like who is um uh what's his, who's in Creep um Creep and Creep Two yeah du- Mark Mark Duplass Duplass yeah like yeah. Duplass but like they they still mm. keep that shit small yeah they and you know they're um, however you feel about them but like that shit's small and you know just do a lot of small shit. Then move on to your pets. And work your way up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Were you guys bothered by the fact that there was no fist fight at the funeral? That, that was what I was going to mention earlier. Um, None. Because that I that popped into my head watching this. I'm like, weren't his... This, that was Rachel's they parents? They hate each other. Rachel's parents right, and yes. Lewis hate each other. That which subplot's get, missing which, from It's this gone. There's a yeah. glare. Yeah, they don't even, it doesn't pay glare. off. They don't yeah. even speak in this no, movie. No, not yeah. at all. Not at all. There's no... Yeah, that no whole tension and subplot is missing. Where's the grief? Yeah. The great thing about the original is like just when you think... 
like you couldn't feel any worse as a person the movie keeps piling on right yeah. so like yeah. just when you think like maybe this is the much. shittiest it can get yeah <laughs> maybe too much honestly for some people it probably is too much and maybe that's why they don't like it maybe because it makes them feel so shitty mm. they don't want to and I right. get it I get it but like what could <laughs> be worse bar. than your two year old got hit by a truck and you're at his funeral uh, your father-in-law and punches you in the right, face yeah, yeah. and you lock the casket down right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah I mean it was just yeah it's so raw and awful as soon as they cut to her casket being lowered in the ground I was like well Fuck, we're not getting the fist fight no. then. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, okay, I didn't feel any. I was just going to say, yes, that's so exactly I felt it. nothing it's for exactly any character it. in this movie yeah. at any point. The movie brings. I felt you- annoyed. Yeah. yeah, I felt yeah. like, but not at the characters, sandwich. just at the movie. Well, no, I, I, the movie. Yeah, I that's, a different, that's a different thing. Like, yeah. what do you feel towards the characters and like the movie as a whole? Yeah, I don't know. I was kind of annoyed with Ellie for like the entire time. Yeah, I, I didn't feel anything because she's for a any precocious, character. you know. And I knew the whole, uh, you know, she does a dance routine in the living room at the beginning. I'm like, okay, well, that's coming back after she's dead. And, see, and sure me- enough, it doesn't. I'm like, but what's the point? Why she is her dad's like, why'd you put the old dirty dress that you were buried in on? And I was sitting there going like. Like, she's not going to have an answer for this. No. Because the movie told her to do it. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't my, make any fucking sense. And my it, did, and it, didn't, like, it didn't make sense that she didn't put on her tutu that she wore in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't she put that on? No, that would have made more she's sense. A spooky kid, and she comes back and she starts knocking shit over. And it would have been clearly yeah. she's homicidal. It's like, but why? It would have been creepier <laughs> if they had buried her in her tutu and she put that back on. Yeah. But no, it was just a dress. You remember that scene in uh, Insidious where that kid in the sailor outfit's like dancing in front of the radio? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That I was like, they saw Insidious. I was like, this is lifting, like, this is taking, like I said, things from like modern ghost story movies, like imagery from those movies and being like, well, this is what plays well. That was so 10 times creepier. Let's inject it. Yeah. yeah. Because no, Insidious the, is 10 times creepier. The, you're yeah. taking the, the, since we don't have a, a three year old who's intrinsically an innocent, we're yeah. going to put her in a, in a little uh, ballerina dance and have her do it because it's a it conjures an idea of innocence but you're corrupting it and making it like well she's a and then we'll make it evil. Yeah, it's yeah. now evil and creepy but I'm like it's not creepy because I've seen this thousands of times before and it's just yep. not working on its own yeah. yes. the uh, she hey. goes and she kills Judd for uh, apparently you know like she well I mean because the movie oh, tells her the that literal, she has to do the it. literal Chekhov's gun in this movie of like his gun being in oh, there yeah. I was so mad by that I that was like I was like they show his gun in the drawer when she's like she because apparently her and Judd have the real quote unquote friendship heavy mm-hmm. like air quotes with this in this mm-hmm. movie and like she like sneaks into his house and he's like looking she's like looking in his drawer and he's like oh yeah I have a habit of going through people's things and like you literally see a gun in a drawer and I was like wow we have a literal yep, check gun totally in this movie come fuck this later. movie oh, it was everything it was setting things up and yeah. checking them off which yeah. again an elegant movie does with some uh, grace yeah. and finesse this doesn't yeah. have that um why does uh why do, who burns Judd's house down and why? Can we go can we go back one? Mm-hmm. In you said, when we get to like Judd dying. Like a big frustration with me with this movie is why does this turn into just like a slasher movie at the end? Why is cuz in the and again I'm I'm trying not to be like in the original they did this but like but like like they I'll fucking, be that person, they cut worry. his heel like he's got that slit across the mouth which in the other one I'm just is like really she, gross she yeah. like what there's nothing imaginative about you just, the little kid stabbing him to death and that's it like that's yeah. it yeah like dude, we could like like do figure out something like in cool. the, we we get it's like a house of horrors at the end of that movie in well, the and, first one. You know what's really frustrating is that so the the Achilles tendon slash, right? Mm. So that is unique to the Mary Lambert movie that is not in the book. In the book, they talk about how he stabs through Judd's hand and it hits his face a little bit. Mm. And Judd how how Judd can see it on both sides of his hand and feel it in his face at the same time. And then after that it just says and then the blade came down again 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 and he died. That's okay. it. There's no so like for them to take that specific like well-known moment from the original movie that's not in the book. And like use it again, but then in every other instance of this movie, you'd be like, "We're gonna do the opposite." Mm. Is bothersome to me. I'm in the first so one, nervous. it works because he's a three year old kid, and how can a three year old kid possibly have any get the drop on an old man? Right. right. Well, you cut the Achilles tendon and you exactly. it down to your level. In this one, it's just because it, it happened in the original movie. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and that's it. And we got to do that's it again. It. The ending of the film is completely different than the first one. Oh, I love this. Oh, I... This isn't the next brilliant edition that this movie had. I mean, it was one of those moments that I was like, <laughs> this is fantastic. So Lewis 
Now, uh, I, I believe, like, uh, so Ellie, reanimated Ellie, ki- has killed Judd. Then she turns on her mom because mom is, like, aghast at, like, all right, you're back, but you're not my daughter. And her dying words are, don't bury me there, Lewis. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And so at some point in this, I'm not sure the, the sequence of events, but uh, oh, well, Lewis I'll tell you, puts, we get 20 minutes of boring, and well, then yeah. we get to this point. Well, yeah. Lewis puts Gage in the car, and he locks the door, and he says to Gage, Gage, don't open the door for anybody else except for me. And then he closes the door, and runs off, and I'm sitting there going. Has this I man like, ever talked to a child? I yeah. laughed. I what was what actually it? laughing at no. that point in the movie because <laughs> I'm can... like, "This is great. You're telling a fu- like a two year old, a two year old. Yeah. Like was... he understands." Yeah. I was sitting next to Colin, and I can confirm he <laughs> laughed. I saw. I saw, I saw I him like, laughing. Laughed too. out loud. This is the worst fucking thing. <laughs> I saw him laughing too, and I had been laughing at other points. So I was like, "Okay, we're all laughing, so we're all on the same page here." I heard Holly yawning, so uh, <laughs> yep. I knew that there was something. Up. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the goofiest thing. So at the end of this, it builds like basically. Uh, Lewis has to take uh, Ellie back to the pet cemetery, try to kill her. There's like really unfortunate visual effects where he's given the whole speech about, you know, whatever, I got to kill you because you're evil. And she's doing some kind of like hyper freak out. Yeah, that like, was so what bad. Was, what was, was that? So bad. That is from modern scary movies. I was that's, embarrassed. That's it was them. so out that's of place. I was embarrassed for them. By so here. out of place. Yeah. It was weird. And I'm like, I, you'd have, they'd have balls right now if he shoveled her head off. Yeah, like but that. They yes, but they don't. No. And he raises nothing. it for a second, like he's going to. And yeah. I was like, "Do it, do it." And Shovel her head off. But no, this movie, like this movie's neutered. And to, has, yeah, no, has that's why they is. go back there. She drags mom after killing right. mom. Yeah, she, drags she mom, mom to the pet cemetery. So, buries mom. Just killing her with a knife. Lewis come wakes up, comes out there, yeah. and then yeah. tries to kill right. Ellie. So Rachel apparently, kills him. If, if you get buried in the pet cemetery, you're cognizant enough to know that you can take someone else and bury them there, and that's fine. Whereas, like in the original movies and in the book, like like we, they're just flesh eating zombies, basically. Like, right. but in this one, you're cognizant enough to be like, I should bury everyone else there. Mm-hmm. And I, that was when I was like, there's no going back now. No, there's no much time. It, there's not enough time left to redeem this. But it's working towards this. I mean, it felt like it was out of like Tales from the Crypt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or something. This yeah. is the Tales from the Crypt ending where Gage is in the car looking out the window and it sees his family and the out of focus, you know, all three of them walking and up the church road. And then Church jumps on the hood. I'm not yeah. entirely sure they were all three there at the same time. That it really did look like, like it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they composite them all together. Especially with Church when Church came on the hood. Yeah, yeah. When Church jumped on, I'm like, nobody's here right yeah. now. <laughs> this is a manufactured but show. We Jesus. jumped over it, but Jason Clark gets stabbed in the back by Rachel. Yeah. Jason Clark gets stabbed in the right. back, Just which total, like yeah. I think totally. was supposed to be shocking, but the three of us that were in the same theater together, yeah. like this, our crowd was silent the whole yeah. time. Silent. No one reacted to it. anything. Nope. So uh, that was supposed to be a shocking moment. It's funny because he totally got John Connard. Uh, yeah, he did. He did. Right he did. There. He did. Yeah. See? See? And I think we're this all is what Jason. This is why he cast Jason. Clark. <laughs> yeah. We got this one moment. I think we were him. all supposed to be like, oh, oh shit! But literally, that didn't happen. No, so, no. Our our theater was dead silent this whole movie. <laughs> was that no going, one reacted to anything? Kill him! I, I I think I was I think I was like had my hands on my head. It was furiously shaking my head. Like I can't believe you're doing this right yeah. now. Like I think I was so off board with this movie at this point that I was like, how dare you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, so you're cognizant enough that Ellie takes her mom, buries her in the pet cemetery. Uh, Rachel comes back because you know the pet cemetery works in like minutes now. Minutes, minutes. Yeah. Um, she comes back. Stabs <laughs> yeah, Jason Clark. Like, Apparently, he gets buried. Comes there. back. We get the out of focus through the windshield shot of them all coming up. Church jumping on the hood. Engages in the car. Cut to black. Are we supposed to think that's badass or scary that they're going to kill the kid? Because guess what? They did that in the original. They actually right. killed him. In yeah. this one, so the irony you. is that the Gage is the, the only one left yeah. alive. Yeah. Gage is the last one left alive. Yeah. But, yeah, it's like, okay, so this thing that lives in the ground reanimates these people. They're going to come back and have their creepy little Adams family or something yeah. that they're going to set up afterwards. Or are they just going to kill everyone in the world? Are they, you know, right. like, what's the fucking right. point of this? They come back and set up house. They have. You're right. The reason people go. The whole reason anyone gets buried in that fucking cemetery is because the people who are doing it can't deal with the loss Exactly. They're having it. They can't process right. their grief or their loss, and so they're desperate fucking people, and they're burying their loved ones in the pet cemetery. Mm-hmm. That is the reason why. Not, to, not we're not having zombies grabbing other people and we're like, wow, we should make a zombie family. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> There's a fucking theme and a 
and a reason behind people being buried there. And you yeah. feel it and desperate, you get it. Right, like you desperate feel fucking it. People. Yeah. It is a it is a dreadful fucking I'm talking about the original. It's a like hurtful it's, it's, movie. it's yeah. dreadful. It's like it's a fucking downer. Um somebody asked me the other day, I th- I think my wife uh asked me the other day like can can our son watch Pet Cemetery? I'm like, no, 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 no. 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 I, I, it was all caps texting back. I'm like, that's a fucking bummer. No, because it is. It's a, it's a really good movie, but it's a bummer because it is about it hurts. dealing with your grief yeah. and your loss and mm-hmm. what the desperation. And it is a descent into like dealing with that shit. What happens when you get what you want? Yeah. And the consequences of it, and boy, did they just fucking throw that shit out the window! Right? Yeah. With yeah. This movie. The, yeah. They, the, the they said all the gravitas. Get rid of that. Yeah. Anything yeah. that's gonna like the any peop- weight to it. Just the people who made this movie didn't understand the original. No. At all. I don't think they understand loss or. I don't grief. think they. No. Ca- I don't think they care. No, either. they don't. I don't, I don't think, think they care. No, they're thought. about constructing, uh, you know, the ultimate thrill ride. Right? I think no, it was. A, it it is, made a lot of money. It's about movie okay. making and not about storytelling. Yeah, I think that's that might You're be it. The movie, it. Yeah, the not, movie. Not they're not like, Pet they're Sanctuary. like, it no. made a lot of money. <laughs> they were just like, we'll slap a. What's the next Stephen King property we yeah. can make? Right. That's what it yeah. was. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I know uh, it. Uh, there was something I was going to say and I lost <laughs> it because there's so many things I want to say. I, if I somebody lost could cut all, together but... all the. <laughs> that have come out of our mouths throughout yeah. this episode. <sighs> oh, um, what I was gonna say is, um, the dialogue when Ellie's like stabbing her mom with the kitchen knife, which uh. she she ditches the scalpel and grabs a fucking butcher knife for no reason or whatever. Um, that like I I understand what they were trying to go for, but it, they, they did not earn it, and so I was not going to give it to them. Is like when she when like Ellie is stabbing her mom and like saying all that horrible shit, and uh, Rachel goes like, "Oh, you're not my daughter. Like my daughter died." We're supposed to be like, oh, she's come full circle because she finally accepts death because, you know, Zelda's haunted mm-hmm. her, her whole life. But like, no, you didn't earn that movie. No. Don't don't. How dare you put that on me right now? And like, I I didn't really like I didn't like what they did to Rachel in this movie at all. I really no. prefer no. the Rachel from the original Not at all. movie. Because yeah. like, honestly, that monologue she gives about Zelda in the original movie is really hard to like listen to. And it's really upsetting. Yes. Especially because like the thing that movie gets about grief is that like her outburst about Zelda comes out of nowhere, right? So, like, they're yeah. in the bedroom together, and she's like, and Zelda died, and I was home, and she goes into, she just launches into this monologue out of nowhere, and sometimes that's how grief is. You push it down long enough, and it yes. just comes out. It explodes, This yeah. movie does not understand that. No. no. At all. It thinks it does. But this... It thinks it's smarter than the other movie, but it's not. It's not. <laughs> Colin's making uh, a face well, right now. I'm just like, should I say this now or I'll just forget just, it for later? No, but just, I mean, it. it is just like it. this is kind of the pop psychology that most modern filmmakers uh, employ in their movies. It's like if it's like you're an echo of what a human experience is like, but yeah. it's like you have no. It's like an alien made a movie. Right. Yeah, and I feel this so. I'm many human, times. right? I don't yeah. feel like people. I don't feel like filmmakers think you can have a human experience in a horror movie. The people yeah. that make them. I don't think they think that that can happen. They think we're stupid. They, they think that the horror think audience is dumb. Is gone in a movie where you're. I mean, where you are, you know, killing people and cutting them up and everything. I think mm, they think that yeah. they the, the, there's there's still humanity in that. The proof is the world we live in, where there is still humanity in things that happen to people, right. and they just take. They don't believe that can happen. Yeah, in it's like these a movies. fax machine copied a person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the teleporter. It's or a something. copy what of a copy yeah, of a copy. copy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like yeah. okay. Yeah. It's like you've copied the human emotion, but you just you yeah. don't understand it. Yeah. And so you rebuilt it and you're like, all right, here it is. This is human, right? And you feed it back to the humans and they're yeah. like, it doesn't, you're kind of off. Something got yeah. lost in the teleporter. It's yeah. the fly metaphor. Yeah. One positive thing <laughs> I want to say about this movie. doesn't understand the flesh. No, how I'll, dare you? I'll give this dare. movie one thing. Uh, I thought the church, the cat actors were great. I thought that they were trained pretty well and they yeah. performed pretty well. It's fun. I, um, I, I, you asked the question on Instagram today. Yeah, I which believe. one's cuter? Uh, I like the the one on your shirt. I, I like, like the stripey one better. Do I like you? The new, I oh, think he's I'm cuter. For, I'm I think for he's original cuter. church. I think original church <laughs> plays his role better. Um, I, I, I mean, I think like in the '80s you had less to work with, so you had, well, the sure. cats had to like perform better. But like Holly and I talked a lot off mic about the cat performances today, and like that needs to be had lately yeah, with. Yeah. A multitude of cat I was gonna say, are you surprised that that was a conversation we had? Um, but okay, are you guys impressed to know that these five cats that play church in this movie were all taken from a shelter in in uh, Toronto? They were not trained movie cats. They were taken, and in ten weeks, they trained them to do everything in this movie. Wow, that's because like, and then they adopted them all us. out. Yeah. We appreciate it so much. They're yeah. animals. You can do that. 
But Not like, with cats, but man. Like cats, cats are hard to cats train. Are man. Really, uh, cats getting are hard a cat to train. box train is hard how, enough. Uh, you know, strict you are with them. If you know, ten, what I mean. but Jesus. ten weeks. Yeah, that's ten what I'm weeks saying. to train a cat. This may not be like a. Oh, look how. You yeah, know. did we see yeah. the no cats? I would say did we see the no cats are harmed in the re- in the making of this movie. But as soon as the credits rolled, I left that theater. Yeah, well, same. I didn't hear I the didn't, cover I of the Ramones heard, song by Star. It was bad. I, it was bad. Punk, I kinda liked it, but um I, I heard a little bit of it as I was leaving. I'm like, oh that's cool as I'm walking. Yeah. Out of the Did you guys theater. notice when the um cause so in the original when the truck driver hits Gage, he's listening to Sheena as a punk cracker mm. by the Ramones. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh but in this one he opens his phone and it's a text from Sheena. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's yeah, there see were that. several it felt like there were several callbacks yeah, like but that. Not Oz enough. The great and terrible became yeah. Ellie Font. That was mentioned once. Yeah. yeah was, but mm-hmm. in the book the Ramones are mentioned constantly. They're listened to constantly, they're quoted constantly. It is like anytime Lewis is doing anything, he's either listening to a Ramon song or he's like singing it to himself. Like mm-hmm. that is a constant thing in those books. So like for them to include Sheena in a text and like at the credits is like the bare minimum they could possibly do. So But again, this is assuming that you have seen the first That's movie. First so right. But this can... movie thinks I have. Yeah. I know. So... That's what I'm saying. But Right. They need to make their stance like yeah. and stick like to make, it. Yeah. Make make a movie that stands by itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so we've thank you for listening to our super long Pet Cemetery episode. It's going to get even longer because we're going to read yes, some of your is. mail and we're going to go around the room and tell you <laughs> what we actually thought of Pet Cemetery. <laughs> In case this, you couldn't tell, <laughs> this is where. Boy, did I love it! I know that's what I'm waiting for. I'm what waiting for classic. one of you. I'll slap to say, you guys if one of you says you love this. I will. This I will one. walk out. All right, so this may not be a surprise, but you're yeah. going to want to stick with us anyway. So don't turn us off it's, right uh, now. It's, it's the journey, not the destination. All right, so uh, first of all, we need to uh, summon our mailman, and that's Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He's listening to Sheena as a punk rocker. He's got, a little, he's got on. a Walkman on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he seems like he'd be a Ramones fan. Yeah, I mean, he not? does. Yeah. yeah, that's very true. That's very true. He was in I the think, Pet Cemetery music video. If you look closely, and in the last time I think we, the last Pet Cemetery episode we did, we buried him in the Pet Cemetery. Yep. Oh, did, yeah, did we? He didn't want to, but we did <laughs> it. <laughs> Come back yeah. extra dead. Uh, so we want to remind you how you get a hold of us, so we can read your mail on uh, in uh, sorry on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sad Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. We got a review. On iTunes? On iTunes. Oh, nice. Thank you. Uh, Rusty Ryan, who runs the, uh, he does a series of uh, paintings and a cinema museum and t-shirts under the guise of Ferocious Femmes. Mm-hmm. By the way, we recognize it. it's that's the that's Brad Pitt's Brad Pitt's character from Ocean's Eleven, isn't it? Rusty Ryan in uh, twelve and sure thirteen. Is. In twelve and thirteen, <laughs> of course. Yes. Uh, he, Are we going to post a video of his that video of his little museum thing? Uh, you can find it on YouTube. Look up uh, Ferocious Femmes. We should at least mention it because it's pretty amazing. It, the shirts are pretty incredible too. Uh, a collection to rival. A lot of what it's, I've seen. It it's is amazing. Yeah. It, it reminded me, I used to work in the Barnes & Noble music and DVD department. It was like if that whole department was in someone's house. Yeah. Like yeah. 20 times. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's like, a theater, art house, and museum. Yeah. It was, you should check it out. It's cool. It was incredible. Uh, but Rusty Ryan says, I love 70s drive-in and grindhouse movies and any other films related to this genre. I always have movie-related podcasts playing in my headphones as I paint, mow the grass, or do other projects. The Saturday Night Freak Show is one of my favorite shows. Entertaining, informative, and enjoyable. They are very informed but not know-it-alls, and when they're unsure of a certain aspect of a film, they'll just say that rather than fake their way through it. Mm -hmm. Over the years, I've come across many movie podcasts with younger commentators that don't have the cultural or historical perspective to to be able to make comments or critiques about movies because they don't know or they just don't care what came before it. The Saturday Night Freak Show crew can be very critical, but that criticism is based on facts, perspective, and production qualities. Over the years, I've made it a point to see as many movies as I can, but every five or six weeks, the freak show brings one to the table that I'd missed, such as Arrival, Slither, or Train to Busan, and then it's a rush to eBay, Netflix, or Shutter to check it out. Trust me, because I trust them. This is the real deal. Hats off to Colin, Sean, Holly, and Michaela, and best wishes for a long running podcast. Dude, I'm We're so sweet. Really We're tearing tearing up right now. I'm not That's crying. amazing. I 
like that he points out that uh, we own up to the fact when we're idiots and don't know something. Like, right? it's true. Sometimes I'm like, hey, I don't know this. Yeah, but sometimes we don't know shit. <laughs> like, we, we do know a lot of things, but we also don't know a lot of things. Yeah. You know, yeah. like... But thank you very much. Oh thank my you. God. Very kind so of much. Um, That's a and thank very you for the amazing shirt. Yeah, can we thank him right now for those fucking shirts he, he sent he us? Has, he sent us some Holy shirts cow. that he uh, designed and, and shipped to us, and they are pretty They're damn amazing. Great. If you go to eBay, uh, Ferocious Fems, and Ferocious look at Fems it, on eBay. Yeah, it's a store. It's you gotta a, check it out. If you've ever seen a badass woman in any movie ever, she's on a shirt. Basically. Like it's yeah. awesome. Uh, you know, Even Miss Forty Five. Yeah. Yes. And the yeah. Franken Hooker. Franken Hooker. <laughs> yeah. uh, Furiosa, Ripley, anyone Daenerys Targaryen, yes. anyone you could want is it's on amazing. Shirt. And they're all really well done artwork, so go buy them. Yes, go check them out, please. Yeah. Uh, and thank you again. Uh, about Pet Cemetery, Johnny New Jersey says about the new film. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm very excited. My cat, not so much. As I did with the release of Halloween, I'll avoid spoilers for a week so you guys can be the first to tell me about the movie. Well, I'm honored that you wait that long. You know, know, that's spoiled the movie by the internet, right? Uh, Michael Whitaker writes in and says, "Does the Ramon song appear in the movie?" As a cover at the yeah, end, unfortunately, it does. Uh, right. Holly made a good point uh, when we saw this mm-hmm. in the theater together that she thought there was going to be a slowed down version yes. because that's like the trend in movies now. Yes. And I thought for sure when he was killing, carrying Ellie up those stairs, yeah. up the ancient stairs, yeah. to the McMagbury, <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is the one that's going to kick in. Right. Buried. Yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. Yeah. Cemetery. I yeah. felt. I've and I. I mean, not, not that there somebody? was. Not yeah, that Leonard there was Cohen like, would be great for that. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't and we have to bury Leonard Cohen and then bring no. him back? Yeah, right. Oh that version fuck of it? Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't we have to do that? <laughs> and not. And not that there was really much of a tone in this movie, but that would have made more sense to yeah. me. It yeah. would have been. You know? I would have given it some points. But for they that. go yeah. with. You know what? Ramones are a punk band, and Starcrawlers a punk band, and bam. Yeah, but, but this. Version, but oh. this movie doesn't. Have an accurate nod to anything else, anyway. So what the fuck does that exactly. matter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What they're gonna choose now to be accurate? About yeah. Right. yeah. Like, oh, now you're gonna you decide yeah. to like go for something. Now I'm you're like, gonna oh. go with the rules. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Andrew John said he just got out of the movie. It was my number two most anticipated movie of the year. How'd that go? Was. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What a waste. Sometimes dead is better. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm having a rough 2019 at the movies right now. We all are. Uh, a lot of are. promise. <laughs> Travis Legler writes in and says, "Does a semi make a swoosh noise every noise every time it drives by the family? The, that jump scare the scene one, in the trailer. Yeah, the two times drives by. Yeah, yeah. Well, he it does. says the jump scare. Well, because it's like all of a sudden out of nowhere, like yeah, you that's, know, yeah, you don't hear it yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he says that was his first red flag. The first movie had a few cheap jump scares, cats and trees, etc. But I hope this movie learned better." That's why watching the original Nightmare on Elm Street or Ghostbusters and others can be hard after watching the remakes. You almost can't can't help but say, see, that's how it's done. It takes you out of the enjoyment of the film. Regardless of the quality of the movie, I can't wait to hear the podcast. Just like with Halloween 2018, the new it and a few others, I probably hear the podcast. I'll probably hear the podcast before seeing the movie. Oh, okay. Well, first of all, that's (laughs) really sweet that you would listen to us before watching the movie. Yeah. Uh, the truck only goes by twice in this whole movie. It once at the beginning and then when it hits Ellie, and that's yeah. it. So, well, but I'm not. In sh- I don't know if I read this wrong or I'm interpreting it. He says he can't see the original Nightmare on Elm Street or Ghostbusters after you've seen the new ones because you go see that's how it's done. Is that backwards? I think it's backwards. I think yeah. what he's saying is it's hard to watch remakes when you have the original. Yeah, the original. Mind. Like, look yeah. how it was done. In Which the it original. is hard. Yeah, to, yeah. Uh, maybe. I like. I had a really hard time going into this movie. And putting the original out of my mind and the book out because of my mind. Because it's so goddamn close. Yeah. yeah. But uh. like, but also like you're also not asking me to because you're also calling the movie Pet Cemetery. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Right. You know why the remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre became such a big huge deal and everybody was like, Oh, this is a fantastic thing. It kicked off the modern horror remake boom. Because mm-hmm. nobody had seen Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre. You're probably I know that's right. Heresy. No, but no, no I think one you're had right seen about that. the original Absolutely fucking right. movie. Everyone has seen Pet Cemetery. Yeah, well, because every AMC Fear Fest, every Halloween, they play yeah. it nonstop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on TV constantly. It's still going. And I mean, Texas Chainsaw, the original, has obviously come back now. But right. uh, Jacob Laws writes in and says, since the book is pretty unsettling, what would be the most unsettling thing you guys have ever seen in a movie? For me, it would be the sloth and lust victims in Seven. Mm. Every scene in Funny Games? 
<laughs> every <laughs> death, <laughs> every death in funny games. I'm gonna go with the whole movie, Cannibal Holocaust. That too, yeah, that's up there. True. Um, All the I, animal mm-hmm. deaths, especially in yeah. the yeah, animals. Right. Yeah, yeah. the animals more yeah. than the people. Animals, yeah, um, or regarding Henry. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> wait, just just wait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's and saving like. Private Ryan. <laughs> yeah, 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 saving yeah. Private Ryan <laughs> is yikes. Uh, yeah. I, I answered this on Facebook as well. Mine has always been uh, Murphy's death and Robocop. Oh yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. Another one. that's, that's the one that just even today Ooh, I'm just like yeah. that's I that's yeah. disturbing and it it hurts and I can't yeah. Ugh. Yeah. I might have to agree with you there. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's a that hard one's one. haunted me my entire haunted life. Haunted me my entire yeah. life. Yeah. Uh, my unfab life writes in and says, "I'm interested to hear all of your takes on Pet Cemetery. It's been getting seriously panned online. I'm just waiting to hear if it's a theater or a couch movie. Couch. couch. Oh, At best, just spoil the. At best, it's a couch movie. <laughs> Sorry, that's we're having you know such what? a reaction. This movie, I cannot just sit here and there, wait. Yeah, you know what? Couch. It's, it's a, one it's of those movies that, like, thing. if you're doing laundry, you don't pause it while you go to get your laundry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So you don't you're bother like, pausing uh, it. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. it will be playing really nonstop on HBO or something. Uh, about last week's movie, The Rage, Carrie Two, oh. MF Mad, the Keeper of the Wall of yeah. uh, oh, yeah. Fame, yeah. For the Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, he says that we inducted Amy Irving last week because she was the singing voice of Jessica Rabbit in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. All right. Okay. She was in uh, Deconstructing Harry, and she was in The Rage Carry 2. All wow. these you have to be, We have to cover three movies with a, yes. a, a performer or a director. Very interesting. I didn't, interesting. Know, I didn't know she That's was the amazing. singing voice. That's great. I didn't know that either. Uh, Dom Cree says, okay, not being creepy. But I, <laughs> so I'm about to be uh, creepy. I'm about to, it's a preface to, right, a preface hear to being something creepy. creepy yeah. All right. Well, he says, but Sorry, I had Dad. a bit of a nerd crush on actress Emily Burgle eh. for, uh, when All I was right. a teenager. Oh, that's I remember the sure. pool scene, but that's about it. I don't get how that's creepy. No, it's not creepy. It's not creepy. We've all had that. No, yeah. Uh, we've, we've all said worse on this podcast. Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> In uh, the prior week's episode, No Retreat, No Surrender, uh, I don't know if we said it on the episode but kurt mckinney the star of that went on to star as matt reardon in guiding light from mm-hmm. 1994 to 2009 mm-hmm. christian Steele wrote in and said so you're saying he still can't act <laughs> uh, yeah yes, i mean this is I mean, true <laughs> soap opera that's like the the blue collar of like hollywood right you know yeah. essentially yeah, yeah. 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 you yeah. punch the clock you do yeah uh so both michael whitaker and dom cree had uh some help for us about what we were trying to figure out in that film why the mob would want to buy dojos. Yeah. Yeah, we right. said it was yes. a bad business plan. I was plan. listening to this. I was yeah. kind of just like, well, you guys made sense. And it said made sense. I'm just like, yeah, not a lot of money feels like it's going to be no. coming we're going no. out of this no. No. business. No. If okay. a car wash wasn't enough for Walter White, then right. a dojo's not enough right. for the I'm mob. using that logic before I read this, that okay. a dojo is a bad idea. Yes. Bad idea. Okay. Yeah. Yes. But Michael Whitaker says, perhaps they could make money off of dojos through illegal fighting and gambling. Otherwise, I can't see any logical reason to want to buy up dojos specifically. Specifically, also, perhaps it's just a good place. Good to have places that are beneath suspicion for hideouts. I think it's like a hiding in plain sight sort of thing, right? I guess. You know, Maybe, like, but even then, you yeah, got to have an illegal fight club in the basement. Yeah. Well, Dom yeah. Cree says uh, it could be because, A, they're popular and there's money to be made. And they always keep an eye on is who's there, making money. That's what I'm no, saying. There's is no there money, money to no. be made in dojos? Or, he says, B, they want their protection money. If you don't cough up, they're going to force you out. He also says, "Well, yeah, that's uh, mob mentality. That's that's the point of the movie, right?" Well, he makes a point that uh, we, as learned uh, freak show movie reviewers, have completely missed. But Corey Yoon also was a director on Above the Law, starring Cynthia Rothrock, which Dom is head over heels for this movie. Above the Law is the probably the Cynthia Rothrock movie. He also says. uh, Corey Yoon also contributed to the Ozploitation classic, The Man from Hong Kong, mm. which I think we've seen the trailer for. He says, I heard the dismissive tone that you had when regarding the great King of the Kickboxers movie, a movie with Billy Blanks and a weird snuff film plot element. Oh, you no. have to check it out. It he sounds says, ripe. So yeah. what? Freak show, so. Did you just say Billy Blanks? Billy yeah. Blanks. The King of Taibo. What? Yeah. Wow. Uh, he also says, P.S. Thanks for, uh, to Colin for awakening me to the fact that Bullet for My Valentine did a cover of No Easy Way Out. Well, you're, well, you're welcome. Oh, really? Did they really? Did they? Did we say that on the show? I, we it's been a couple weeks since I've been here. Yeah. I might not remember. Clearly we did. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right, yeah. Bullet for My Valentine. I don't remember no. us talking about that. Huh. And uh, finally, that about the burning, B Movie Poster Vault writes in, and uh, he recommended a movie called The Ripper from 1985, which stars... <laughs> 
Tom Savini. All right. All right. All right. I'm yeah. into it. I'll put it on my right. list, man. Yeah. yeah. I think you the put out a poster the for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of want to see that. Sounds interesting. All right. So uh, now we come to that moment that you've all been waiting for. Colin. What did... <laughs> yeah, Sean. What did you think about yesterday's pick? Of Pet Sematary. <laughs> uh, 2019. Uh, it's pretty easy. Sometimes dead is better. There it is. There it is. I think that, that's all right, it. It's all right there. I think we're just going to give Colin the that's wrap up yeah. and then we yep. can just that's shut it, it down. That's it. Yeah. Sometimes dead is better. Because yeah, I think I've articulated everything else yeah. that I thought about yeah. the movie. So, yeah, uh, uh, it's a, uh, I mean, uh, on a technical level, you know, I think that there's probably, you know, just based on reading what how people are reacting to the movie, I'm like, okay, there are people who, you know, maybe in 20 years, people are going to be going, this is a classic movie. Because, I mean, you know, the first one, like I said, has its issues and we regard it with uh, uh, high esteem. But if this is your first time that you've seen this and you like it, good for you. But I uh, hated this movie. I hated it. Uh, hard pass. Pet Cemetery. Yeah. Stick with the original. It didn't need to be remade. The original is fine, and this one just kind of shits all over it. It's not Pet Cemetery, as far as I'm concerned, because once you take, uh, it's about the death of your child, Gage. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's more horrible than a ten year old. I know both of them are terrible. I yeah, can't believe but, I'm defending yeah. this, but it's worse if the kid gets it. Uh, and this movie doesn't do it. It won't commit. It won't go all the way. It's not the same movie. Right. Maybe maybe we didn't hit on it enough in our general discussion, but like Gage serves no purpose in this movie yeah. at all. None. Because he None. can't do what Ellie does because he, he can't, can't talk because he's yeah. a two-year-old. So yeah, he right. serves zero purpose in this movie. No. So pass. Sean, what do you think? Uh, it's worse if a uh, two or three-year-old gets killed. It's also worse if a two or three-year-old comes back and starts killing people. Like that's... That's creepier. Like, we get the grief portion, like, is worse with that, I think. It's also a little bit scarier when you get a little uh, angel child, uh, as it was, coming back and just start murdering people with, you know. That's always been the way it is. In horror movies. Yeah. Little, little kids. Little creepy. kids. Come yeah. back. This Angelic is creepy. kids turn um, uh Yeah, this one's pretty uh, straightforward. I, I thought this movie was uh, dull and unimaginative, mm -hmm. and... Uh, uh, it, it, uh, I think I hated it too. Mm -hmm. I, I think I hate this movie. It's, ah, uh, what, what's the point? It didn't, what's the point? What a waste mm -hmm. in this movie. I'm what? really glad we were all on a similar I, plane yeah, watching this movie. Make, you know, we're dunking so hard, but that like, might you know. be why I hate it. Like that, it was because it's a wasted opportunity. Wasted to opportunity. Explore it could have been yeah. so good. It had potential. Yeah. 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 And it just was like, I it's don't care about all. those. Yeah. Plot. Yeah. Twenty five yeah. million dollars was squandered. It does. Yeah. It feels like it was squandered. Um, as, as you've heard throughout this podcast, the reasons why we don't like this movie. Um, <sighs> thematically, there's nothing there. There's just nothing there to this movie. Mm -hmm. I have to, I do, I do not recommend this. Do not watch this. Uh, again, the original may have uh, a few problems, but it's by far a superior movie. Um, just go watch that and just forget they ever went there with this movie. Pass. Hard pass. Holly. Um, I would be really curious to hear what someone who's never seen the original but actually has good taste in movies thinks about this movie. You know, I would like I would Does like that, that person exist. Mm. I mean, it's possible. It's very possible. There's, you know, there's lots of movies that I should have seen that I haven't seen. You well, know, it's true. That's not to true. say I have like the best taste in movies. You know, I'm not no, saying Sean that. Just but... show, Sean just saw The Godfather like five years. Yeah, ago. exactly. Yeah, it's that's exactly. Cool. That's very exactly. True. I take it back. You're right. It's possible. Yeah, it's, it's, possible. Very it's very possible. So I'd be very curious. But that's to... also uh, uh, this is like a backhanded compliment because he's saying I have good taste in movies. I just had not seen The Godfather, <laughs> so I'll take it. Listener, if you are that person, write yeah. to us. Please, please. Like, write I, to I, us. I'm very curious because I, per I mean, I think we've all been on the same page with this. That this this movie was not executed well at all. The direction is horrible. It's it's horribly written. The acting is just it even looks it's, bad. It's like subpar is too nice to talk about the acting for this. It's just it's word. Yeah, yeah. Like it, the editing you said was off. I agree with that entirely. Yeah. I felt like this this movie was edited and like I, I with it's no choppy. vision with no vision yeah. whatsoever. Like this movie has no theme. It's just it's just a horribly made movie. So. With that in mind, like I said, I would like to hear what someone thinks who has not seen the original to compare it to, and I want to hear if they have all those same problems too. Because I'm pretty sure there, I'm pretty sure it's there. I don't think we're making that up because we love the original so much. But with that said, um, we had said earlier that this movie has it follows the mile markers of the original with certain plot points. That being said, like 
I was so bored with this. I was just waiting for those mile markers. I'm like, okay, when's this going to happen? Because I am so over this movie. And I like that. And I found myself not really even paying attention because I was just waiting for them to come. And I think that says just so much about the directing of this movie. It was just, Oh God, it was just so awful. And I wanted to, I wanted to like this movie. I wanted to love John Lithgow because I love him so much. And he was disappointing. There was literally nothing about this movie that I liked. And I, I feel like there's not many times that I can say that. The, there's I can't pick one thing. Like, there's always something. There is not one goddamn thing about this movie that I liked. It was a waste of fucking time. Come on. That no. cow. <laughs> the no, the he was a Google no. headline. I, he wasn't in the no. movie. He was I, a Google I, headline. I can't say um, I liked the headline, Colin. I yeah. can't. The, the line, uh, well, I'm glad you're not a fucking vet. Was maybe yeah. what well, kind of maybe uh, not even it's not even delivered well. Yeah, but yeah. then but then Michaela's like, but he's a fucking doctor. Yeah, but right. he's a doctor. Right. Right. Which is, the, yeah, right. yeah. But it's it is yeah. a of the moment. Like I, huh? I literally yeah. elbowed Holly and was like, but he's a <laughs> yeah, doctor. She did. He's a doctor. He <laughs> she did. know when something's alive or dead. Also, and, <laughs> and I'm sorry, we no, we didn't fine. touch on this, you're but fine. like uh, Lewis drugs Judd. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Why does that happen in this movie? Because that immediately makes him a villain. He's immediately not a likable person as yeah. soon as he does that. Right. Our person because, who's supposed to be our yes. protagonist is drugging another he, person we're supposed to like. Does he think like? this uh, yeah. uh, 80-year-old man is going to stop him from um, bear, uh, apparently, digging up his daughter and going up the hill? Yeah. Apparently yeah. that's what he thinks. And he yeah. drugs him. He doesn't, him. and he drugs him. Yeah. Like, like, as soon as that happened, I was like, well, there's no one likable in this movie anymore. Like, yeah, there, there's nothing. no I one care. I can identify with I hope with she comes back and yeah. fucking kills right? you. Right, right. Sorry. And no, no, it's fine. It's fine. And I, I have to say, my biggest problem with this movie is fucking Zelda. She's the scariest part of the original, in my opinion. I w- was haunted by Zelda from my childhood on, and she has no impact whatsoever. It's boring. It makes no sense. It's bizarre. It t- completely takes you. Well, I mean, takes you out of the movie. You're not really in it anyway because right. it fucking sucks. Yeah, yeah. You have to be but to be taken out. You're, of it. you're yeah. in the first movie into the second movie, basically, is what's happening. <laughs> But the, it's like they didn't even try to make her scary. I mean, they really, there's really no comparison. I don't know how you match the first one, but well, I feel you, like they didn't how do you try. Go down so much. I feel like, the first exactly. One. I feel exactly. like they weren't confident in their design. And it, cause I you think never so. saw her face full on. You always saw like parts of yeah. her. You face. saw like three quarters I, of her I face. I feel like yeah. they were like, we can't compete with a 30 year old man in makeup. So they were like, we're not going to. So I, I like, we saw her yeah. down the hallway. We saw her like back a lot, but like we never saw just, like a yeah. good full on shot. It's just, they weren't confident in that choice. This at all. is, yeah. this is the point where I'm like, like steer into this, um, this kind of new wave of ghost horror movies and everything and cast the guy who's the crooked man and who's the, the, yeah, the Javier, guy from it. But uh, yeah, Javier, like that. Uh, Bole or something. Bole, yeah. Uh, something like that. Cast that guy. Yeah. Well, get Doug her. Jones up in there, you know, get, like, get some yeah, just angular shit going on in there. Yeah. It's just go for they that. They were confident just, in what no, they did No, it's, there. it's yeah. just, it was just kind of the, the last straw to prove that this movie had no balls whatsoever. They didn't take any chances in this movie and it fucking sucked. I mean, I don't, it was, it was a diet horror movie and I feel like that's happening way too often with horror movies. Like no one is taking any chances and it's disappointing as fuck. That's it right there. This movie was just so fucking disappointing. And I, I I don't even want. Yeah. (laughs) No, no. no, I was going to go, but hereditary, but I know Michaela hated it. No, I didn't. That guy was like, like, okay, but like. I hated did, did it for a different reason. But yeah, like I saw it. Yeah. But did you hate it? No, I hated it. Oh. But I but I like <laughs> but I agree with but okay, I hated it, but I also agree with what you're saying. Like, yes. I agree that it took chances and made choices and I respect it for that. Yes. It's just not for me. I don't think it's a bad movie. I just think it's not for me. I agree. There's a difference. You totally agree. The mainstream like, one is like uh, we're gonna make I respect it. that movie a lot more than I respect this yeah, movie. Okay. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Okay. I completely agree with that statement. Yeah. So yeah, I know. F- he, huge fucking pass on Pet mm-hmm. Cemetery 2019. Don't even want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> Michaela. Uh, obviously, it's hard. It was impossible for me to separate like my love of the book and my love of the original movie from this movie. Like, I really, I, there's just no way I was going to go into this without being like, well, that's not right. That's not right. That's not right. But like, I didn't expect to say that's not right so many times. Yeah. Like, I, I thought, like, Colin and I have talked off mic about this movie for months, right? And Colin, you said, and I thought for sure you were going to be right, and you weren't. I thought for sure you were going to be right when you said it's going to be just like the Carrie remake where it's going to be a boring retread of the original. 
I wish this was a boring retread. I wish it was the same movie I've seen, but with better actors. It's not. It should be. It should be A-list people doing a movie I've already seen. I would I would at least be like, I get it. You know, like it's a cash grab. But this one, it's like a cash grab, but also like, uh, fuck you to everything you know. <laughs> like, I don't I don't get what it's trying to say because it, it wants to take your money because you know the original movie, but also wants to be like, this isn't your mom's original movie. And I don't understand how I'm supposed to feel about that. It's just, this should be a showcase for actors to flex their, like, look at me crying on camera and look how dramatic I can be and look how over the top I can be. But it makes sense in this setting because these circumstances are insane. How was there, like, no feeling in the funeral there, scene? No, it was nothing. Like, okay, nothing happened in that okay, scene. Listener, if you ever want to tell if an actor is actually crying or fake crying, look at where their tears come out. If their tears come straight down the middle of their face, that's an eye drop they put in their eye. If their eyes are really red and bloodshot and the rims of their eyes are really red, that's a menthol stick that they rub on their eye to make mm-hmm. them cry. <laughs> it's very easy to tell when someone is fake crying. And Jason Clark is very much fake crying. Very this red eyes. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, if someone looks like they're high as fuck when they're crying, it's a menthol stick they're rubbing in their eyes to make them cry. It, it's There's a million ways you can make someone fake cry in a movie. And like this movie, I... Like, like I said, I went into it being like Jason Clark is an I can't remember anything about him. He has no presence on screen. To now, I'm like, he's terrible. He's just a bad actor. I never once felt bad for anyone in this movie. I didn't connect with anyone in this movie. I never felt any grief. I never, I never felt anything. Period. Um, the the fucking child actors. I mean, Gate the the kid that plays Gage is doing the best he can for what little he's given. Um, Ellie is a fucking ham sandwich. She's overdoing it, but I also think she's given really shitty dialogue. I I just this movie starts threads without finishing them and it introduces new things and it changes things that end up hurting the integrity of the film and they had something so good they could have done and they just wasted it and they wasted it to be like you don't know what's coming and that's it like they wasted it to just be like you don't know this movie and I I don't like I don't understand this has to just be it like it made a lot of money so let's make this movie that's the only reason this exists. That's totally what it is. Yeah. And <laughs> or at least why it made a lot of money, we can finally push this forward and no one's gonna tell yeah. us no yeah. because it's Stephen King. We have King. to have the next big Stephen King thing yeah. because the Dark Tower worked out so well. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh yeah. But I was hoping that like even if it was bad, I was hoping that I could at least be like, I saw John Lithgow deliver like some amazing monologues mm-hmm. and really have some moments that I could connect with. Mm-hmm. And it didn't even have those. He didn't get any good moments of like it's that damn road and like any of those moments that we quote all the time from that original movie, like none of that happened. He honestly seemed like a grouchy old curmudgeon that I don't even want to talk to. Like he had none of the warmth and like love no that warmth. No warmth. Fred Gwynn had in that. And like I know so like when I was listening to a Who lot knew of what a treasure Fred Gwynn was. But, right. Know, the thing is, like I'm i I'm reading the reviews. John Lithgow is phenomenal. No, John he's not. Lithgow at least is I, phenomenal. I love John him. Lithgow he's bad. Great in this movie. I love him as an actor. These he's people, bad in this. There's want John Lithgow to be great. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, yeah. It's like, uh, yeah there's on, this, like the culture a, of uh, on paper it makes sense. Or, on great. paper it makes sense, but it doesn't work out. In a movie screen. where everything is bad, John yeah. Lithgow is the best part even though he's horrible that's and what I think is. that's, yeah. what, that that's is. what it is yeah. Yeah. but okay so I when I was listening to this interview with the directors they were talking about like why he didn't have the main accent and everything and they were saying that he was very good friends with Fred Gwynn right they did a couple plays together and everything they were, they were pals from a long time ago um, he did a table read where he did a main accent and they were like perfect right um, and then when they show up to shoot that day he doesn't do it and they're like well, why aren't you doing it and he's like well I realize when I do it I sound like I'm doing an impression of him so he kind of felt like if he did a main accent, he would just be doing like a Fred Gwynn mm-hmm. in Pet Cemetery yeah. impression, yeah. right? I, I get that. that. I understand yeah. when that. When they announced it, yeah. I'm like, how are you? You have yeah. to do yeah. the Fred Gwynn impression. Yeah. You, this is a lose lose for an actor. Right. Actually. So I understand <laughs> yeah. stepping back away from the accent. I get it. But I felt like there was like, but I felt like he didn't even try. No, because like, then it's like, then I'm not even going to compete. Yeah. Which is a lot of what this movie feels right. like. Yeah. It's just, I'm done. Oh, the first one it did it better. better. Yeah. I can't do it better. Yeah. I'm not even going to compete. I, f- I felt nothing for any character in this movie. I felt nothing, period, for this movie other than frustration with it trying to trick me and outsmart me. And, uh, like, 
I felt mad that I gave money to this movie when it thought it was smarter than I was. You didn't and have to. It, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I know. I, 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 like I said, obviously my bias and my love for this movie is obviously going to cloud my judgment, so take that for what you will. But do not see this movie. M- maybe if two years from now you're listening to this and it's like streaming with commercials on HBO catch a few minutes to see if it's something you would like right eventually but, yeah, wait through three years and like the curiosity gets yeah you just like huh no I'm, yeah. I'm hoping that two years from now there's somebody who loves this movie who's listening to us tonight and hopefully we've convinced them that you're wrong you're wrong yeah <laughs> but like, you know what they were right yeah but like but like it's like Colin you and I were talking off Mike about how like we were worried it was going to be like the the Carrie remake right you know, it's going to be these A list actors, mm-hmm. and like, but they're also not going to bring anything to it. But it's not even that. It no, doesn't even worse. come to that level. Yeah. So it's worse than that because, like, at least the Carrie remake had Chloe Grace Moretz and Julianne Moore giving it their all, right? They're yeah. trying their hardest. Yeah. They're doing yeah. their and best. And that's a bad movie. And that's a yeah, bad movie. Well, because yeah. it's unnecessary. It's like, yeah. you know, Psycho, the remake, or The Omen, or Carrie. It's like, right. you're doing it so close to the original. It's like, what's I the can't point? Just go watch. The original. And, and that's kind of yeah. where I'm at with this. And the, like, Car- the Carrie movie has been lost two times because of that. Like, if anyone's going to revisit Carrie, they're going to watch the original. They're not going to watch the Julianne mm. Moore, Chloe Grace Moretz. I'm hoping this one gets lost two times. I think I'm hoping yeah. it does. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I the, the marketing push for this was huge, so I'm sure you've seen it everywhere. But j- mm-hmm. yeah, just don't fucking see it. Just don't see it. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I like, I'd, I mean, Michaela's coming out in of the this, corner rocking. Going, I just, yeah. I'm just, just so upset. Just, I'm just don't see it. Like I'm so, I'm so mad. I gave my money to this. I'm just like, because like I'm really like at first I was like, is it going to beat Shazam at the box office? And now I'm like, please don't, please don't beat Shazam. <laughs> Shazam probably deserves it at this point. So um, don't go see Pet boy, Cemetery. Boy, am I looking forward to Shazam? <laughs> yeah. Tell you what. yeah, it's gonna be great. Yeah, yeah. I'm going with uh, number two, Pet Cemetery. Number two. It's, it's gonna the will. first weekend. It's gonna come out. And Captain Marvel will probably be number three, right? We're trying yeah. to. We're trying to. Uh, it's us or Dumbo. I think for number three, we're yeah. we're trying no, to impact Dumbo, you no. on the second week. Yes. Like, yeah. Should you go? Are you gonna? No. Oh, I didn't catch the first the week. Keep your money. Drop. Yeah. Don't do it. And yes, you are. Now that you've listened to our yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Keep your money. Yeah. Ugh. All right. So I guess that's uh, Pet is. Cemetery 2019. Super sized episode. Yeah, yeah. Unanimous. Yep. All right. So uh, next week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Colin. Colin, what are you going to make us watch next week? Uh, next week we're going to watch a little movie called Waxwork. Ooh. Have you guys seen this? No, no I've never I've, seen it. I think I've seen it, but it's been a long time. Okay. This was like a grab bag out of a hat. I was going to do another movie, and then Joe Bob's doing it this week. Oh, and I'm like, he? I don't want to see it twice. Because uh, I was going to like not watch. Oh, yeah, because I'm like, i got to watch a Larry Cohen movie. He right. died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, oh, yeah, I could have picked true. something else, I suppose. Right, but I'm yeah. just like, oh, fuck it. Well, I'll choice. watch Q the Winged Serpent right. and see if it's any good. But uh, so yeah, we're gonna watch Wax All Work right, cool. <laughs> next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.